Well, the Vale Street talk time. Ooh, Curry's back. Curry is back, everybody. It's Curry? Been ve- Cur- Curry? <laughs> Shut up, damn. Curry has been naff for the past three or four weeks, and I told you, I told you that you don't need to worry about it because it's going to be back on fine form before Why did long. Why you waggle your this finger week. in my face? Like... Because I'm back in teacher mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said it would be back in it as it was fantastic this week. I very, very, very much enjoyed Coronation Street this week. You're rubbing your hands together. Oh, like I rub it with glee. Yeah. Was it five out of five week? No. Wait and find out. Oh. Oh. Wait and find out. I'm not giving it a five. I'm not giving it a five. Definitely not. Not giving it a two. But, you know, it was a good week. It is not going to be in the twos this week, so don't worry. Ooh, who do I give as my character the of the week? twos. Can we really? Hmm. Okay, what? so... What? Character of the week? Well, then, mate... Hmm. There might be a... I'm confused. We'll find out when we get there, but I'm going to be torn are with you, this. Have you eaten something? No, no, I'm still, I'm still buzzing. Okay. I'm, I'm picking up the slack for you. So, we are going to start with Yaz fighting, which took some very great turns this week. And definitely, even I mean, I, you know, I try and avoid spoilers, but sometimes I see them. But the way that this story went this week, I did not foresee coming... Especially not this week anyway. So I was watching, you know, on Monday and Wednesday's episodes with with the heart of my mouth. It was fantastic. Um, And then in a title that has shamelessly been stolen from ITV Corey's Twitter this week, The Whole Shebang. (laughs) Which is another surprise for you because you had no idea the sinkhole was happening, did you? (laughs) No. I knew it was happening, but I'm really, really glad that you didn't find that out. Because literally about five, what, five, ten seconds before you said, are they going to have a sinkhole? (laughs) And they did. (laughs) <laughs> um, we are then going to serious storyline, Gemma. Serious not, case of the Ollie Wobbles. No. Things are not looking good How for dare Oliver they Platt. Put this in this mm. week when we're having such hilarious fun. I know, I know. But you know, look on the bright side. Maybe Nick's got a replacement son just waiting in the wings. Yeah. Devstitute, which had the <laughs> comedy scene of the week. I have to say, <laughs> one of the, the scene that I <laughs> laughed. <so> <laughs> I've never laughed for a very long time at a scene, particular scene, get to that when we come to it, in, in Coronation Street for a long time. Well done, Dev storyline. And then, for some reason, we had a few throwaway Tincognito and Todd Squad bits. Although the Todd Squad did have an interesting twist, which I was almost going to reveal on last week's podcast, but I honestly thought it was a rumour. Now it feels like it's fact. So, wow, what an intriguing introduction to this week's Coronation Street. I know, if you listen to this and you haven't watched Coronation Street yet, I, first of I, all, heartily, what are you doing? I heartily recommend that you go and watch it first. No, don't. Because I don't want to spoil this. the surprises for you. No, listen to us. You don't need to watch Coronation Street anymore. We'll do it for we'll you. And we'll let you know what you think of it. <laughs> Yaz fighting, I'm doing this one. Yes. So, Tim and Sally have had a bit of a bust up, as you know, over the whole Jeff thing. And he's been sleeping on the sofa over the weekend or Good. whatever it's supposed to be in Weatherfield. And he's looking at what his old mean? photos. What well, it's supposed to be in Weatherfield. Well, you know, you know, never know what day it is that I have weekends. Oh, I thought anymore, you were like, I don't know what they call sofas in Weatherfield. <laughs> Couches, I don't know. He's looking at the Chaise photos, Lange. which reminded me a little bit about that Michael Rodwell scene. Oh, when yeah. he was like, my whole childhood was a lie. What a lie. Anyway, he and Sally start bickering and they talk about the wedding being cancelled. It, it looks like at this point it's off. Although by the end of the week, maybe it's back on. on again. But I don't know where they're going to find the cash Can you still it. have weddings? Yes, you can have whatever you want. Can you? Well, Gary and Maria does. Sally no, and Tim no, can show their can't. wings off. No, from Monday, it's six people. No, no, it's different. That doesn't count for weddings. That's... Rubbish. Didn't count for weddings, didn't count for schools, didn't count for <laughs> didn't all count the good for stuff. any economic activity. No, basically. So, Jeff goes to uh, find Tim, who's it's in... The government, if, to stop people getting confused, the government should just come out and go, if we can tax you doing it, you can have as many people as you want. But if it's just you, you're only allowed six. And everyone would get it then, wouldn't they? They'd understand. <laughs> it's, not, it's not difficult to understand. Jeff goes and finds Tim, who's having a bit of a, a sad time in Victoria Gardens. And he says... He, and I'm glad that he didn't go completely back to Jeff's side. He's telling Jeff, look, I'm starting to think Sally's right. Things don't add up about me childhood, he says. He talks about his baby photos. None of them had pictures of his mum in. None of them had pictures of Tessa. And Jeff says, well, you know, Teff had a bit of a thing about not wanting to be in photographs. She put on a bit of weight when she had the baby and she was a bit... And, I totally sympathise. I know, I was thinking about you during that. Do you know what Victorian mothers used to do to appear in photos? They used to drape black cloths over themselves. 
So quite often you'd see... Over their heads? It, yes. Not like a like a parrot in a cage yeah. that you want to put to sleep? Quite often you'll... Well, not quite often, but if you look at some pictures of Victorian children, there will be a very conspicuous human figure sitting underneath a big black sheet with a baby on their lap. Interesting. Tess could have done that. Also, also a feature of Nina's family photo album, I assume. <laughs> Nina would love that. <laughs> Nina's probably got a whole book of pictures of like bet. that. Actually, yeah, it's like, you know those photos and the others? That, yeah, that, they, um, well, yeah, Nicole that's Kidman another film. famous thing Great that they used to dead do. People. Yeah, and you can always tell the dead person in a picture because it took so long to take a photograph back in the day yeah. that the people who weren't dead were a bit blurry. And the only, one that, the only ones that were perfectly still were the dead people. Oh. So all the pictures of the corpses are crisp and clear and everyone else is blurry, like, they're the ghosts. Oh my gosh, we're only on the second scene at the moment. We're already talking politics and Victorian photography techniques. <laughs> um, yeah, so Tess didn't want to be in photos, according to Jeff. Obviously, we know it's because it was Philippa that took the photos. Um, or no, but Philippa wasn't. Or Philippa wasn't be... there. Or, or Whatever, Jeff, Who took the photos? Blah, blah, blah. No, doesn't matter. It doesn't wasn't matter. Wasn't Tess. Jeff. Jeff sort of again playing the sympathy card, isn't he? He's like, I wasn't a bad dad, was I? Think about all the magic tricks that I used to play on, play with you, and we used to do fun stuff together. I always tell you the truth, Tim. It's all lies. They're lies, not mine. Please don't turn against me too. Remember when you were little and you said you didn't want to learn to read, and I said, fine, I won't make you because I'm a good dad. I, I didn't make you go to school. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, to, he's he's trying to work his magic on Tim, but it's not working. Thank goodness. Um, Sally. Oh, she does a bit of espionage. She does a bit of a plan, doesn't she? She wants to go to number six uh, to grab Jeff's yap yap top laptop because she found out last week about the security well, no, she's cameras. Trying to, yeah, she's trying to work out what what's going on with these security cameras. Yeah. So she tells she pretends that Yasmin wants a copy of Jane Eyre because I haven't got any in the prison library. library. This is what she's telling Faye to try and get the key off her so that she can let herself in. So she goes in to do a bit of sneaky sneaking at number six, grabs the laptop, not the charging cable. I you know oh that I noticed God, that Chad. straight away. You know what I'm like with laptop charging cables? It's my thing. And when she walked out of that house, I, or when she went to walk out of the house, I was like, Sally Metcalf, Webster, if you turn on that laptop and it's just got 5% charge left, what you've you only do? got yourself to blame. It was probably sitting there right next to it. But no, nobody in Weatherfield thinks they needs a laptop charger to do their laptop in. Well, you'd have egg on your face, didn't you, Sally? You're lucky that you had it fully charged up before you went and installed it. That's all I'm saying. Anyway. She's trying to get out the house, but oh no, Jeff comes in. But, what are yes, you doing? He goes upstairs. He goes to splash the pirate or something. I don't as, think he does in the say. end because he doesn't go up there for very long. Well, I don't know because... She seemed to be fannying around she, for ages. She has been making herself a cup of tea, maybe. I know. Going through the drawers, trying to find some nice bits of cutlery to acquire. I don't know. <laughs> she, at one point, she tries to sneak out the orangery. Uh, and then she, right. then she turns back oh, because no. they didn't have that set set up in Studio yeah. One. So she has to go back through the house. And yeah, Jeff comes back uh, downstairs. Yeah, I, I guess he didn't go to the toilet. Or maybe he just went to... No. Maybe he went to go to the toilet, but he was shy. And he was like, I can sense someone's in the house. <laughs> yeah. I can't wee when anyone's in the house. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> anyway, whatever the reason, he so Finds coincidentally it. comes downstairs just as it's she's trying to make her escape. That he comes downstairs oh, to well, you know, everybody always walks in on people doing things. What happens Sally to you walking nearby yeah. or, you know, standing next to a room when you're ex-girlfriend of 10 years reveals about a 10-year-old child. You know, they're always there. They could have been in a whole hospital. Anyway, that's another story. Jeff says, or you, what are you doing in my house? So Sally tries to spin this Jane Eyre story, but he doesn't really believe her. And he's like, you open that bag right now. So then I didn't get this. And I know you said that it was supposed to be a bit of um, irony or whatever, but Sally whips out this Houdini book from I don't know where. Because... Did she come out I of her bag? I was making fun of Did you. Did she just like, you know, pull it out of her elbow? Was Is Jeff jealous of Sally's sleight of hand? He should have been, how, how did you do that? That was maybe, upstairs on the second ago. Maybe Jeff's the one that played the trick on Sally and she found Jane Eyre. And when she took the book out, he swapped it with Houdini. Yes, you're absolutely right. And that's why right. she looks surprised as well. <laughs> I, literally, I don't know. And I don't I think know, it really matters I was making fun why of you and how Sally has this because Houdini Because she spent book. ages for, fast forwarding and rewinding I to did. try to work out where she got this Houdini book from. And I made a, a post on Twitter saying you didn't get the irony here of the fact that it appeared out of nowhere. 
but I don't think you're supposed to be that bothered about where she got it from. You're just supposed to assume that she found it at the point was where it you in weren't the kitchen? looking at her. Was he there reading it while he was making his cornflakes this morning? I don't, did Jeff, no, I bet he has, like, grape nuts, doesn't oh, he? Oh, God, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh... Or, what's, no, overnight I can't think eggs. of anything worse than that. Oh. You, overnight, you like overnight eggs, don't you? What, what am I supposed to be thinking of? Things that he Gross could breakfast eat. cereals that Jeff would eat. Mm, herring. Oh, no. oh, all bran. Mm, I, I just hate all cereals, so nothing you're saying is any different. Cereals are lovely, plates. but they do have their downsides. Um, or grape any, nuts. Yes, I say grape nuts, yeah. That's what, well, well, that's what we had. You know what... You, Listen to everybody. When we went, I sidetracked again. You know, my great auntie Belle died this year, and we went round her house to clear it out in the larder, in the kitchen. There was like packets and packets of grape nuts there. That is proper old person food. It's difficult to tell, right? If you don't know what grape nuts are, then you're lucky. They're neither grapey nor nutty. American, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah, might be right. It's difficult to know when somebody has vast quantity of of a particular food. Is it because they love it, or is it because they hate it? Like, oh, and yeah, they thought yeah. they'd like it, so they bought loads. Ooh, this was on offer. And what? Ten for the price of two. How come nobody wants to buy these grape nuts? So I'll just get them, because they're such a bargain. We had a packet of grape nuts yeah, on did. the top of our kitchen thing. Because I, I was in a diet plan, I got one. Oh, yeah, it was. And it was. I was like, ooh, grape nuts sounds really nice. I bet they are, like, nice and crispy and sweet. No, yeah. what are they? They no. taste like no, they're just hamster like... pellets that have been pooed out. They're, they're gravel, aren't they, basically? Yeah. Gravel nuts. Anyway... What are we talking about? Special Sally pilot. is having a very important serious conversation, yeah, confrontation with Jeff. She says, I couldn't find the, uh, the Jane Eyre book that I wanted, but I found this Houdini book and instead. I and he's like, Oi, that's mine. She's trying to make her escape or something. Uh-huh. He, he won't let her go. And Sally stands her ground defiantly. But then when Je- Jeff kind of comes at her to get the book off her and she jumps, she's clearly spooked by him. She's, she's stood her ground for so long in this story, hasn't she? But yeah. she, at that well, moment, she knows fears. He could still mess her up. He totally could. I mean, what's happened to Elaine at the I moment? I know that she's still been in prison, know. but she, all she did was teach people yoga. Yeah, she but she, you know, she, might have, she might have learned a few shanking tricks. If she can produce a Houdini book from out of thin air, then well, you never know. Two questions of the sharpened end, you've probably got them stashed in their socks or something. Can't you kill someone with a book? Don't you shove it in their nose? You give them a really nasty paper cut. You whack cut. them in the nose with it, and then the, the shards of bone go in their brain and they die. Oh, if only Coronation Street had an After Hours edition. If only they had me on the writing team, I'd say, listen, can we can we end the story here with Sally just murdering Jeff with a book about Houdini? What would be good is if you could have, like, two <laughs> versions of the same episode where roughly the same stuff happens, but one's shown at half past seven and the other one's shown at nine o'clock or half and past nine. And up. that one is the fully uns- censored version <laughs> where they're the characters saying what they want to say there's no flippings for steve mcdonald oh and my yeah, God, can you imagine i'd love that that'd be quite fun for them to do there's an idea I for coronation street for the 60th anniversary anyway, sally, sally says, says you're threatening, you threatening me and he says yes i am oh no and and that's the cliffhanger that is the cliffhanger on episode. monday's episode like, oh that was good oh, is he gonna murder wednesday her? even better sally escapes um uh, doesn't take her too long she kind of throws the well, book i mean the thing is she's like uh we're like magnets now opposite ends of magnets if I move forward, you are legally obliged, thanks to help the health and safety working conditions of Coronation Street and ITV, to take one step backwards. That's so true. So you can't stop me from she escaping. She her powers of social distancing. Powers of re- social repellentness. Yes. Um, she she, she runs outside. outside. And Tim happens to be there. She, Sally's like, help, help, I'm being threatened. Your dad's after me. And Jeff's like... Oh, sorry, Ooh. I thought it was in true. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, he, he says this to Sally before she goes, doesn't he? He's like, well, what are you going to say? I'm just going to say that I came down and there was somebody there. And I, yeah, I attacked them and I didn't realise who it was. He's like, oh, he's a horrible old man. And um, I like the fact that he knows what his alibi is going to be. And he's so confident that he even tells Sally what he's going to say is a lie. Yeah. And he knows, really, the way how, how brainwashed Tim is, he really... Is in no danger of him not being believed at the moment. Yeah, but Tim had been telling yeah, him previous episode mere hours before. I'm, I'm okay, starting. Show you though how, how thing is, he's got every reason to be confident that this would work because of how many years he's manipulated everybody, mm. not just. Yeah, him. he's got a good track record, hasn't yeah. he? So anyway, Tim whisks Sally inside where, he, where she tells him exactly what happened. He, he really doesn't see? believe her. Yeah, Yeah, see? you're right. She doesn't, he doesn't, does he? And that's when she pulls out his, uh, Jeff's laptop. 
Uh, and she's like, oh, I'm fine. Now we're going to find something. We're going to find camera footage. We're going to find threatening emails to Elaine. Um, now, if only we could guess what Jeff's password um, is. We've got to do it in the three eternal, attempts. Yeah, I know. The eternal soap problem. If you're going to guess someone's password, you're not going to get it on the first time. You're not going to get it on the second time. But third time's a charm. So big question is, what should we put the first and the second time? It doesn't matter for the I, first and the second time because it won't be that. Ex- exactly. It doesn't matter. I can't remember what she actually does put for the first time. But the second time, she tries the Great Magnifico, which makes sense. But no, Tim says... What about the Great Magnifico 2? It works, they're in. I I mean, it's not quite so bad as the um, Rick Nealon Weatherfield County date that it was set up for football team and that's what his password is to get into a safe full of cash. But I don't know, it seems pretty bad. Jeff needs to have lessons on secure passwords, especially if you're hiding criminal stuff in there. Honestly, if I was going to try and guess what, what Jeff's password is, it would be variations of Jeff is the best. Like <laughs> Jeff is the best one. Jeff is the best 99. Jeff is the best 111. Yeah, do you think that Jeff actually forgot at one time and then he had to reset his password? Probably. Like, oh yeah, it was. It was a great magnifico. I was going to put great magnifico too. See, uh, see what have the same password. See what I don't get have. about this is when Yasmin was looking over Jeff's shoulder that one time to see him put in his password. And when she saw that he put in Great Magnifico, she didn't go, Jeff. Let me tell you about internet security and e safety. <laughs> <laughs> or was that maybe he's changed it since then? I don't know. But it was a bit silly. But I think we're used to that watching. It doesn't Coronation matter. It's see, I, w- I want them to do a joke where they get in on the second attempt because it'd be quite funny. And then somebody <laughs> says, Oh, oh. I didn't. It I thought we'd password. have to have three password one. <laughs> I thought we'd have to have three attempts. Anyway, they can't find anything. She's she's gone through it. She's gone through uh, emails. She's gone through camera footage, and it's all he's, he's deleted all evidence. Or has he? Well, they need a hacker. Yeah, they, yeah, and and lead hacker Faye because she's a kid. She knows I all know about things like computers. this. Like she's got an ICT GCSE or something. I tell you what. She's got an idea. Sally and Tim are the sort of people who that fantastic scene in the IT crowd where um, they give Jen the internet. That would totally work <laughs> on Tim and Sally, wouldn't it? I think you're right. The box with a flashing light on the top and I it's the, the internet. You've got to be careful. Yeah. So, Faye... Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, everybody. Oh, this is a good scene. This is a good scene. Jeff comes home. Yeah. And he... No, no he's at home, wasn't he? He's reading he's the like, newspaper and he's what? like, oh, what should I do? Oh, Time I know. to email one of my prostitutes. <laughs> I thought he was going to do something worse than that. Like, <laughs> so he turns to page three of the newspaper and goes, oh, yeah, they don't do that anymore. What should I do? It's not like the Internet. Good old days. <laughs> anyway, whatever, whatever reason Jeff may have for going online, he goes over to his little <laughs> understairs nook. And it's gone. It's not there anymore. The look on his face. Oh no! When, he, when, he, yeah, when it that was sinks really good, into him, really what happened? He had so many great reactions yeah, on Wednesdays was, when yeah. he realizes it's all unraveling. Brilliant stuff. He just is like frozen. Yeah. So meanwhile, next door, Faye has reinstalled the camera app, but there's no footage. What do you know? Uh, and no, that, I thought that was quite clever. What? She's like, oh, I've reinstalled the camera app to see if there's any footage because he uninstalled it. I thought. Oh, I didn't even think they'd think... I wouldn't have thought of that. That's quite good, but there's no footage. I wouldn't have thought that if you reinstalled the application that it would make no, footage No, I know, but appear. at least she tried. At least she, she's only 18, bless her. They do everything on what iPads the these days. The fact that she knows how to work a PC is good enough. So, Sally says... The fact well, that she called it an app, though. I know, I know. It's not an app, it's a programme. Wait, maybe he's got... Um, I don't know, are there any ones that have an app? I don't know. No, but it's an app. Yeah, an app it, is the, an application, isn't it? But it's yeah, it's generally, a okay, yeah. I'm telling you the terminology right. for phones that is apps and on computers. It is a it's dot a program. .exe, it's an executable file. <laughs> Faye, you idiot. Yes, Faye. <laughs> anyway, Sally says, what about his photos folder? Oh, Sally. Never thought that they might have numbskull. thought to look in that before because... She could have thought maybe there's photos of him being nasty to Yasmin. But never mind, I don't mind that. She And, and Faye says, no, nah, that's just going to be stuff. It, it, it's a photo where his phone uploads stuff to the cloud, then it gets automatically downloaded onto the laptop, isn't it? Yes, I it don't is. really understand how any of this works because I don't have this. Technology. I think, uh, no, I think it's easy to set up if you want it to, if you've got enough data or whatever. Anyway. Anyway, what shut up. they find in here is that time when he threatened Yasmin <laughs> and filmed her on the camera. And everybody had forgotten about that, hadn't you? We hadn't forgotten about that, no, but I didn't hadn't. expect it to come out this way. So, what is he? How? That. So, what? So, he filmed Yasmin. No, I know that. 
it was then just left on his phone. Yeah. His phone automatically uploaded it to the cloud. So the why cloud didn't Sally autom- find this earlier? Why? Because she didn't look in the photos album earlier. But it was her idea to look in the photos album. That's what it is. Well, she, she, it doesn't it really came to matter, her later. But... It doesn't matter. That's the break at Cliffhanger. After the break, that they're all watching honestly, the no, video. No, wait a minute. It was, that doesn't make any sense. What? It doesn't make any sense. Because if you're looking for photos... If you were looking for video footage of somebody from a camera, you would look in the video and, and photos... Well, your videos folder is different from your cameras fo- or your your photos folder, and he might and he might even have a different photo uh, oh, folder for phone. I, guess it doesn't I think it's fine. I think it's fine. They found a video. They everybody. found the video. That they time, watch it. That time when he was going, "You're a stupid idiot. How do you like being filmed?" Yeah, because says, "Oh, I only like it when I get awards." <laughs> <laughs> um, it was yeah, it was after the Magic Box episode, wasn't it? And he's yeah. he's been uh, filmed jiggling it. On the script, on stage. I want to know. Tim uploads that to the internet and he's like, I don't like being on screen. How do you like being on screen? Yeah. I want to know was there a bet in the writing room to find out how many times they could make the actor say, Jiggle It Jeff in a non comical manner? I'm going to miss Jiggle It Jeff once this is all over. Because when they see it, um, I think it's Sally goes, This was right after Jiggle It Jeff. Yes, she I does, hope that, that I hope that there were like people just watching today's uh, Wednesdays for the first time, and with their family and having to look at their grandma and go, Grandma, what is? Can you explain to me what is Jiggle It Jeff? <laughs> I I think you know if, I I don't want Jeff to die after this story. I've said that all along, and I stand by it. But if they do, and he's in his coffin <laughs> and he's going through the 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 Ellie Gates, no, what? no the, of hell, yes, his teeth. <laughs> If he's going to go and get his incineration done, he needs to get his coffin stuck and they need to jiggle it to push him through, like right. they did with Fred Elliott. Was it Fred Elliott who was, whose coffin was too fat to go through? I think so. I think the best thing that. would be is at the end of it, we see Jeff has a funeral and the only person who attends is Tim and he walks out and discusses halfway through and then we see the vicar standing next to the grave and on the grave it just says, jiggle it, Jeff. With the, with the oh gosh, yes, that would be brilliant. <laughs> wouldn't that? that would be good. That would be good. Although lowering the coffin down into the ground as well, it could be a little. The hole could be a little bit too small, and the vicar just has just jiggle it or something. But yeah, that that would be good. That would be acceptable if he died. But I still don't think he should die yet. No, I don't think he should die. But I mean, he's he's. I mean, no, he, he's what. Even if he doesn't die now, he could die at some point in the future. Uh, he might be immortal. We don't know. So I think Sally's going to be in it forever. There's anyway. no proof either way yet. Where were we? Um, They've watched the Jeff. video. Faye's there. She's she's the one that's in front of the the, the laptop, isn't she? They're all very nicely socially really distanced. And, and I just have to point out, of all the things they could have found on an old man's laptop, he's, his wife has been in prison for a while, this was probably the least embarrassing thing. That's and true, they all that's true. Glass. They really were asking for trouble, <laughs> delving into his photo and video <laughs> files. Um, God knows what else he's got on there. Yeah, he's got it more, more safely hidden. <laughs> um, he Yeah, so Faye's just like, the, oh, this no. is yeah. She, she's horrible. She's like this is this is so cruel. She said yeah. straight away. She she doesn't falter, does she? She knows that that's wrong. And Sally says, well, "Look, it's obvious. That Yasmin was terrified. Tim's just standing there in shock." I thought that Joe Dutton was great on Wednesday's episode I, I'm, and Mondays. To be <laughs> fair, I. If you're a Tim fan, this would have been vindication for you. Like absolutely. Yes, finally, hooray! Tim's yeah. in on it now. Because because lots of lapsed Tim fans have ha, had been saying he's not as good as he used to be what on earth are the writers doing for Tim but this this was Tim's moment to shine on Wednesday and he, oh, it's awful for him because he's like this is my fault I'm the one that posted Jigglet Jeff on the internet Sally's like no no it's not your fault you, you, you weren't to know look at look what he's done she, yeah she wants to go and give it to the police Tim sends Sally and Faye off so that he can let it get his head round it and let it all sink in or something um, which is a bit odd, but it obviously was just to set up the brilliant scene between Jeff and Tim later on when Jeff goes into the house and he's, we we last saw Jeff like in shock, but now he's you know, had to put his bravado back on and he marches in there and is like, your wife t- took something off mine, give it back. And Tim tells him about the video and then it dawns on Jeff. And again, like when he realises, <laughs> not only has my really laptop good. been stolen, but they have found See. this video, which he, he'd forgotten about this, hadn't they? Yeah, he, had, he must he, have forgotten. The look on his face, it's like, oops. Oh, bum. <laughs> 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 he cleaned his track so well up to this point. But uh, this video is, yeah, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Tim says, we saw it, that man, that bully, that's you. 
Jeff says he was, he, he tries to say, oh, I was just angry after the trick went wrong. I shouldn't have taken it out on Yasmin. I said, sorry, afterwards, she apologised straight away. I bet she you... She apologised. Oh, sorry, I apologised straight away and she forgave me. And then he changes the story and... And, and he then says, he tries to like, blame, and then he tries to be like, look, Tim, you and Sally must have had very similar arguments to this, to be honest. And that's when Tim had his moment of the week. And he, he totally lays into Jeff, doesn't he? He goes, oh, I've never shoved a camera in my wife's face and recorded her Someone camera. Someone else does that. That was... They're that, paid for it. <laughs> that was really, really top Tim moment now. I love that. Top and, Tim. And then he starts remembering a few other clues that everyone's been trying to tell him about all this time, basically. He's like, <laughs> oh, there was that time that Jasmine, that Jasmine flinched when Jeff Hang touched you after He's the like, box incident. Hang on, there's that time that Sally said that, that you locked her in a box. There's the time that Sally said that she saw you burning her clothes. There's the time that Sally said that you were abusing her. Wait a minute, she might have been right all My this time. My wife was right all the Maybe she was right about the mayor thing too. Jeff- I mean, Dad, there's one thing I'm never going to forgive you for, and that is giving my wife a reason to say, I told you so. I know, but fair play to Sally. She didn't, did <laughs> no, she? No, she didn't, but she could have done. She could have done. That's good enough for most people. <laughs> yeah, so he also remembers the time that um, Jeff burnt Yasmin's clothes. He remembers the red dress that she was wearing on the evening of the attack and, and um, that he, she obviously wasn't comfortable in. You must have made her wear that. And Jeff was like, why would I have made her wear that? Tim says, that's what abusers do. He says it. Well done, Tim. He said the word. All makes sense now, Tim says. It's all been lies. All the Elaine stuff. She's my mum. What did you do to her? My whole childhood's a lie. Kind of holds that, waggles the uh, jiggle food photo <laughs> book in his face. And Jeff's like, I love you, son. He's just like, totally pathetic. He's the, the like, most oh, bad pathetic man. he has ever been. Great. Um, well, okay, he's... He's he's put on patheticness before to try and win Yasmin round, hadn't he? When, yeah, yeah. But this, th- this is time, this old is old hat. But this was calling to like genuine patheticness. Like he is really feeling like he's lost at this point. He says, "I'm not a bad man." Then the police come round, um, masked to the police to ask to take Jeff down the station, and Tim says, "We're finished." <sighs> oh. Um, <laughs> not much happens on Friday. Which was a shame because Monday's and Wednesday's episode, thanks now. to this story, were absolutely fantastic. And I really, really wanted this More. to keep on More going please. on Friday. Yes, there was some good stuff with some other stuff, with some other stories on Friday. But this ground to a bit well, of a halt, it didn't wasn't it? A, it wasn't a one hour long special so we could see Jeff crying. I thought it could have been though. I, th- I thought, I thought we we'd get stuff more. To watch. Um, all we have on Friday is um, Sally's, Sally starts off the episode pretty, feeling pretty confident that Jeff's going to get what's coming to him. Tim's miserable about the whole situation and they wonder, well, what else could have Jeff done? What's happened to Elaine? Mm. So Tim, uh, yeah, he finds the address in the bin. Yeah. I didn't like, I, I think I said on the podcast last week, surely, surely they've emptied the bin in the cab the office by is, now. Though, it's been say, like a month. I have to say, it wasn't even full. It was only if three you, quarters. Yeah, but so why would you empty it? If you don't well, no, do... I don't believe that they've only... I don't believe that they've only used three quarters of a bin of waste paper. I do. I imagine that Tim spends most of his time just sitting on the seat put with a, with a waste paper basket at the other end of the office and he's seeing how far back he can throw it in. Or it probably gets full of biscuit wrappers in there. I, I reckon sorry, they've got I two don't bins. believe that. I reckon they've got a, a wet bin and a dry bin. The wet bin's where you put all the t- tea bags and banana skins and things. And that could probably get... They don't the have time. bananas at the cab office. Chocolate And city. I reckon that the, pa- the, the paper bin probably doesn't get empty that much because my paper bin doesn't. Never mind. I don't I imagine don't... there's a lot of call for writing on bits of paper. Yeah, because they're on the phone saying you want a... You want a writer... What are they writing down? You want a writer here? They don't need to write it down. I bet they do because they're not flipping computerised at streetcars. Michael. I don't believe it. But I will forgive it because there was a lot of other good stuff in the story this he week. He finds the address. So anyway, he finds um, Elaine's address and then whizzes off. And at off. this point, it's so old, it's basically like archaeology. Yes. He whizzes off in the car, not before seeing Jeff, who has been released by the police, having told them that it was all a misunderstanding, really. Tim, you be my friend again, please. Tim's like, no, it's not off, Dad. I'm going to go and get some answers from Elaine. 
He but he doesn't find her. any. He doesn't tell her that he's going to find no, answers from Elaine. No, he doesn't so I'm from Elaine. He's going to find some answers, isn't he? Yeah. And Jeff's like, oh, curses. curses. Um, so the, towards the end of the episode, Sally's telling Alia what happened. And I don't know why she didn't tell her before now. It took her literally the whole day to tell Alia that she I may have come... Alia. She may have come to the, uh, you know, got the clinching piece of evidence in her Just grandma's on the court same case. Just side doesn't mean that Sally likes Alia. She's like, oh God, I've <laughs> bloody talked to her. Now. I know, I know, but I think so. Anyway, Tim has had time to go back to wherever it is that Elaine's from, I can't remember. Come back because she's not Bolton. at home. It looks like the poster's piled up behind her door. She's dead. She's not been home for a long time. She's done a flit. Sally has to... To stop Tim going around next door to beat the truth out of Jeff. And then the, the big plan. fly in the ointment at the end of the episode is that Alia says the footage might not actually stand up in court because Sally broke into Jeff's laptop to obtain it. And then she says, well, you know, maybe if Imran calls Elaine as a witness, she'll have to come out of the woodwork. And that's how we leave it. So I, I was feeling a, a tiny bit deflated, I have to say, with this storyline on Friday, just because it had been ramping up so nicely and there didn't I, seem to be very much payback from it. Obviously, Tim is completely on tight yeah, side, now, Sally. Now and if he goes back to Jeff's side, he can't, can he? No, he's There's not. There's been going. so many times that I thought he's not going to, but then he does. So Jeff has got no allies now, um, but he's still roaming the street. And I wonder it's if he's going to try and recruit feels, anyone or. The trouble about this storyline now is it's starting to feel as though Jeff's reign of terror is being chipped away bit by bit and eventually he's going to just have no you know no power over anybody but that's not really narratively satisfying to watch happen what would you rather then well i want a big confrontation and some kind of fiery kind of shouting and shocks and revelations and then something definitive that that sort of Jeff can't get out of it now he's in prison or he's being punished in some manner for mm. what has happened. All all that's happened with this story is that bit by bit by bit, by death by a thousand cuts, Jeff has had his you know, his power taken away from him and his allies removed one by one, which, you know, like you say, it's disappointing at the end of this week because even though we had this big powerful scene with Tim saying to Jeff, you know, it's, uh, you're, uh, I I don't you know, you're mm. not my dad anymore or whatever. Still at the end of it, Jeff's come back going, yeah, the police don't care, and they're saying, oh yeah, we can't use this evidence. I'd have really liked what's, to have seen the scene at the police station the with him finale? talking to Fringe McBangs about what's going on here. But did, We've got to have a court case now. I guess that's where where the ending is going. to That's come. where it's going to happen. But the thing it? is, though, my point though, is. All that can happen at this court case is Jeff gets found to be an evil abuser. And we've already kind of seen that happen. I, I, I still stand by the theory and, I, and I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know whether she's going to turn up next week or not. I still stand by the theory that um, Elaine is going to make a last yeah, minute appearance the at the court. Really... Like you know, Kirsty did at Tyrone's case. And she's like, it's me. I've been in hiding all this time because I was scared of him. But then I heard the court case was going and so I thought I'd better show up. Because I'd kill, I'd hate not, myself. But you see if what I, I mean? Didn't. It's just not as. I know, I know. They've got to stick the landing. I really, really yeah, hope they really do because in now. this story has been plodding the last month or so, hasn't it? And and it kind of had to. We know that they had to change this story. You know, they've had to push the end date of it backwards because of COVID. But it's not been working so well over the last couple of weeks. It's just felt like it's on rinse and repeat. <laughs> But this week, it's like brilliant. And, and I wonder whether what we saw this week, surely it must have it must have been going to have happened. I finally got my tense wrong there. That this, this phone evidence, they didn't make this up because of COVID. I, I wonder whether like if the court case had been when it was originally, I think, supposed to be back in you know, May, June or whenever it was supposed to be, whether during the trial, this evidence would have come up and then I don't know I think it's also a bit weird I guess this is true but it does seem a bit weird that like I know the police can't just break into your house and take evidence and it's illegal but I didn't think that other people like because what happens mm. if so what if a burglar broke into Jeff's house 
and stole the laptop and then found that evidence, they wouldn't be able to use it. So how, how, here's an example. Say Jeff was murdering the escorts, right, and yeah. he had murder videos on his laptop. And, and a burglar broke in and found these murder videos and took the police. Would the police go, sorry, you stole the laptop, so really you're the criminal here, not him. You have mm. to give it back. Well, I trust him, Ron. That's all I'm saying. Well, I, you know, I, I, I get that's probably the case because obviously there's a lot of grey areas in people stealing evidence. It just seems a bit odd that... I guess I'll just say it may not stand up in court, but I don't know. Yeah. I just suppose seems if, like everything... if you're a criminal and you get evidence, just... Uh, you just leave it out for somebody to find. If you if you worry that somebody might find it, just, yeah, so, just yeah, leave but... your door unlocked and maybe but... somebody might stroll in and find it and then it's inadmissible. That's true, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, and any... what, if you, oh, what if somebody doesn't steal it but you said you, that they had stolen it? Can you get out of it then? Like, no, they stole my murder videos. And they're like, no, you gave in to me down the pub. <laughs> you said, do you want to see something cool? And I said, yeah. Um... <laughs> well, what, what, the, uh, oh, well, I, don't. I don't know. We've already we've already um, firmly established in this podcast that we are truly ignorant when it comes to law and yes. and how things work. Um, please, could our legal advisor listener no. write in and tell us? Long may it continue. I don't want to know this stuff. Okay. I, I want to be ignorant. I believe for what the they say. I believe it. Um, Sometimes knowing too much can be a burden on viewers of Coronation Street. Yes, as we know, definitely. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, what what did you think then of the twist about how they found the video? I thought it was a bit too convoluted, honestly. It was like, I th- I expected it to be clunky and it was. There's not really any... I didn't mind it. I, well, I, I think I... the best way that anyone ever found evidence of something on Coronation Street was that time when... Um, a- is it Aiden's TV was connected to his phone and then his text messages came off on the screen. Oh yeah, that was great. <laughs> and and there's a funny thing that happened in in our house where if I ask she who should not be lamed, who belongs to Amazon, who has ears everywhere, to remind me to do something at some point, she reminds everybody who's connected to it on the phone. So you get reminders on your phone yeah, of stuff that I'm doing. In the oven. <laughs> yeah, so that could be, that's a good... Um, there you go, for the yeah, future. The uh, I didn't mind it. I thought the password thing was silly, but it's like, okay, they do that on Coronation Street. Oh, so can I just but say, I, did... I don't think, that most places don't have three and you're out. Not everyone's like that. Some of them are different. Yeah, no, I mean, look, we but said Sally got it on the third Street, try. It's always the third go. We, Sally might have been trying a lot more. We didn't see a lot more, did we? We saw her typing in three and it was the third one and the, and the scene cut. So she might have been, she might have been trying loads, honestly. No, um, I think it said three attempts. Doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Why are we? It we, doesn't we matter. Hung up what on are you the about? Thing. No, I didn't, I didn't mind. I quite liked and was satisfied by the way that they found that video because we hadn't forgotten it. I think probably a lot of um, non-obsessive Coronation Street viewers, let's call them, might have forgotten about the video, but we've been talking about it, haven't we? Maybe not for a long time. And I, when they went onto the laptop, when I saw preview pictures of Faye looking on the laptop, I yeah, assumed... Yeah, stop burping. So, sorry. I assumed that they would... Like we, I think we said last week that they're going to go in and find it in the recycle bin or something. The, yeah, that's what the I actual thought. footage of the attack. Maybe I'm just annoyed. That I it's didn't not think. In the recycle bin. <laughs> I didn't think they would find that other footage. I kicked myself that that, uh, that they didn't. But we saw that the footage was on the phone, wasn't it? But it to me, it makes perfect sense that he might have set something up to automatically sync so his phone uh, cam. Uh, uh, Blah, videos blah, blah, and files yeah. gone to his laptop. I thought it was absolutely fine. I I I thought that was a neat twist. Gemma, what? were you cheering Tim on this week? No, Admit it. no, I wasn't. What? Why? He was so good. No. Why? Because uh, I was like, what took you so long? And also that bit where he's like, oh, that's all those times when Sally told me that you were abusing her. You were. You were abusing her all the time. I can't believe it. It's all coming together now. All these clues. Like the time that Sally said that you were abusing Yasmin and the other time that Sally said you were abusing Yasmin. Those little clues, those little bits of breadcrumbs have led me to a startling discovery. The gingerbread house in the middle of the woods. It's, it's Jeff being abusive to his wife. Oh, it's, it, he's been in a real tough situation. He's, he's been hearing all this about his dad, this person <laughs> that brought him up, this person he's trusted all his life, oh, you know, the well, one well. constant in his <laughs> life, although who knows where he was for the first five, six years that Tim Let's was in the programme. Um, 
I, I, I really enjoyed Listen. Tim this week, and I thought Joe put on a yeah. magnificent before. I'm glad everybody who's a Tim fan got their moment of Tim doing something good. And it, yeah, I'm, I am just being, I am just joking. It was great. It was annoying because I knew that it, that it was Tim. <laughs> I do find it a bit irritating that the character I liked the least was like the final linchpin in Jeff. You know, having him. No, because no, I'm no, I'm just saying. Alia had nothing to do with it. That's what I was happy with. If Alia <laughs> so had found the, if Alia had found that footage, I'd have been like, oh, why did it have to be her? But it wasn't. It was Faye, who again hasn't had a whole lot to do with the story. So some people might say, well, she comes in and saves the day. But it was, it was the, it was like the, a bit the of a trinity effort, of it? Faye, Sally, and Tim finding it together. <sighs> and I, I want to like Tim again. I used to think Tim was great with Sally. But for the last few years, no. Uh, yeah, and yeah. this was kind of, maybe it's the beginning of me liking Tim again. I just want to point out that when we were kids, hacking was way more fun than it is in Coronation Street. Do you remember watching Hackers? Did you ever watch that? No. Angelini, Angelina Jolie with her top off. Oh my playing gosh, I watch it. PlayStation and having fun with techno music, running around, even though there's no reason that you should be running around when you're trying to hack into a computer, using telephones people doing cool stuff text flying around on the screen that's a very important part of hacking in the 90s <laughs> and now we get to 2020 when everything in life that we cherish has been taken away from us and finally television has to admit that really hacking is just a teenage girl bashing away on a laptop while two middle-aged people look with, on with their arms folded going i don't know what you're doing <laughs> and she didn't even use like she she used the mouse as well, which is a big no no. Hacking in the nineties was only ever done on the keyboards. Yeah, yeah. You have to just attack the keyboard <laughs> furiously. I've locked into the government. And and, and uh, if you if you use Linux instead of Windows, that's um, a... I think it's Linux. I don't know. <laughs> is that the one with the penguin logo? I don't know either. Okay. I just I, like hacking in the nineties was like Jurassic Park with um the girl scrolling through the animated um menu system to get to turn the locks on mm. and hackers yeah and ma- the matrix running around with with um with discs that you what, can plug floppy discs in your or like yeah. usb drives that you can stick in and everyone's like what is Didn't that have USB drives in the 90s well no um, but you know what i'm saying what else is that? I think so. What, what, so what? What next? Do you think the, this is this what story, I don't know? This is what the I don't know. The story could go on hiatus again, couldn't it? Because that's kind of they, my point. This is what I'm saying to you. They left it at a. a do you understand? Do you understand point. what I'm saying? Like the difference between a big crashing wave that comes like roars onto the beach and sort of sweeps everything away, compared to like just twelve little tiny lap lap lap, and then your footprints are gone. Mm. Like. Jeff has Jeff has kind of fallen from grace, but it's been such a slow descent. Although it's been satisfying week on week, I'm starting to get worried that there's not much left for Jeff to lose, to for us to watch him suffer. Like, what has he got yeah. to lose now? Because or, he's lost everything. He's lost his standing. He's lost his son. Nobody believes him anymore. And not even Faye. I wonder whether he might try and get like Brian back on his side again. I just want to see. I just want to see a little win for Jeff to make me realise that he either cares. Because honestly, at this point in time, Jeff could just go. Well, stuff you lot. I'm going because we didn't see hide and hair of him until like five years ago or however long it was. He's built Two a years life. Ago. Well, he built a life wherever away from Tim. There's no reason to think that he's going to be devastated that two years of his life has gone down the pan. Mm. It just goes somewhere else and do it to somebody else. He'll have to be back for the trial. But what? No, yeah, I know what you mean. But didn't we establish it's not a trial of him versus her? It's the Crown versus Yasmin. He doesn't even have to turn up. He could just go sod this, I'm going. Well, he has to be a witness. No, he doesn't. He'll get called. Mm, I guess guess he'd get in trouble if he didn't turn up. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Mm. at this point if the worst thing that can happen to him is is that he gets contempt of court for not turning up as a witness Mm. the stakes aren't very high are they Mm. i know i know what you mean um i wonder whether he will just do a runner like you know in the classic coronation street tradition of i'm going to disappear off screen for two months so that story can go on hiatus until we need it to resume again (laughs) honestly i I can imagine him disappearing then doing the court case he doesn't turn up for as a witness. 
Eileen does instead, says, oh, he's a horrible man. And everyone goes, oh, he sounds dreadful. Let's let Yasmin off. Put a warrant out for his arrest. He's obviously evil. And then we hear nothing. And then on Christmas Day, he breaks into Yasmin's house and makes her eat Christmas pudding while she he films her for his Instagram live. <laughs> and then he gets bonked on the head by Tim or something. And it's the end of him. I'm, I don't know. Because I, I, quite I, often, Coronation Street does this meticulously, like like established plots and characters and all this stuff and then it just ends in in a very predictable way of like if you're a man villain you get your leather gloves on and you in your dark clothing and you sneak into someone's house at night and try to kill them i i mate, you might be right but i i, I still think as well in the back of my head i'm thinking is is nikki gonna have something to do is with nikki? it nikki the escort oh. nikki the prostitute is it really a coincidence that we've got two stories that completely unrelated that have both got escorts in which you don't get in Coronation Street. I yes, think you do. they They've might all got escorts. I think they might merge them somehow and maybe mm. one of them knows Jeff or something. But what's the point? So who cares at this point now? What would Tim say? Oh no, turns out my dad was was actually banging the escorts after all. I don't know. No one cares anymore about it. It's what I'm trying That's to say. No, there's nobody left on the street who's going to be shocked by literally anything that is revealed about Jeff. Mm. they found out everything there is to know about him and he is now left with no allies or friends and and still the story's continued and he hasn't been defeated so you know it's like it's like a story where the dragon gets his horde taken off him and somebody puts a fire extinguisher in his mouth but he's still sitting in the mountain i don't know who, I think, at this point who cares he can stay there all he wants i think well, it's still possible that cory might pull something out of their magic hat because up until realize up to recently we didn't even realize that um elaine was a thing and that was a nice thing. No, but I extra. don't like yeah, but I don't like things like that where you've been watching a story for like two years, like you say, and then it and then at the very end it's like, Oh yeah, and also this happened and mm. you didn't know about it because it didn't actually happen until five minutes before we thought of it. Yeah, okay. Well, look, okay, look, I think we need to move on, but before we do, I just want to give a few props to the scene with Sally on the switchboard, mm. which was completely unnecessary, but there she was, was left in charge of street humor. cars because Steve was at the hospital, Tim was trying to track down Elaine, and she was there on the switch talking to somebody who she knew, but pretending that she, from the council, wasn't yeah. it? Pretending that she didn't know her. She's like, I've never even heard of Sally Metcalf. I'm like, 30 but seconds I heard later. She was. I heard she I was. I heard she was completely exonerated of all her crimes. <laughs> that was a completely unnecessary, but very hilarious Oh yeah, scene. there was a lot of completely I appreciated unnecessary, that. but hilarious scenes in this week's but There were, there too. were. Right, Gemma. I did like this story. I, I really did. I really, yeah. We I, finished I, Wednesday's sounds, episode going, this is great this week, not a bit negative, but I, uh, my, I'm worried, that's all. Yeah. Because I've been enjoying it so much. I'm worried that there's, I've, I've wrung all the enjoyment that there is to have out of it. And I don't want that to be the case. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure they've got something up their sleeves, like you say, but what is it? I don't know. It's a big string of flowers. <laughs> Jeff is going to pull and pull and pull. It can't just be something that is new. That we didn't know no. before. Uh, no, okay, yeah. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, if it goes, yes, it's me, Elaine, but also, I want to do have you an... know that I had a twin sister that he murdered? Mm. I'd like there to be an of course moment, but the, the mo- yeah, yeah. what I felt really when they discovered that photo on the laptop was like, yes, that does make sense. That could happen. And I didn't, but I didn't think of it myself. I want it to be that. Well, we better stop speculating, otherwise we are going to think of it. Right, Gemma, let's move on. This because was we've, hilarious. we've been going quite a while so far. Yeah, it's time right? for the whole shebang. <laughs> this was stupid and hilarious. Um, and I loved it. On Monday, well, look, we've still got a problematic Shona, haven't we? Yes. That hasn't been solved by the end of the week. Instead, we've got a new problem. <laughs> so on Monday, Shona apologises for embarrassing David yesterday. And then Bernie's there. She's come round for an appointment and... Shona just insults her belt and jeans. And Shona, David says to Shona, you can't just go around saying things like that out loud. And Shona's like, should I say it quietly then? So I'm, I'm still torn between, do I really like this new Shona? And do I feel that it's... Is it it's funny like, Is not? it a character? Is she putting it on? Is she, I don't know. Is, is she, yeah, but, but there's moments like that when she said, should I just say it quietly then? That was brilliant. And then also the, the bit in the next scene when Bernie comes out of the... Um, 
Oh, this was great. So, yeah, so brilliant. Bernie comes out because a drink's been spilled over her and she's shouting at David, who's trying to appease her. But Shona's peering at her through the blinds with the, she's like, she's the living her best, best life. grin. She's so happy. She's absolutely ecstatic. Shona's got a lovely smile, but that, that, that lovely big grin on da- it was David's trying to love, tell fantastic. Shona, you can't laugh at things like that. It doesn't matter how annoying they are. And um, he says, like, they're all annoying. It's part of the job. David comes back home and then he goes out to get ice cream and he leaves Shona to look after Lily. And we all know that something terrible is going to happen. Oh, yeah, that as was... As soon as she's left alone with a child. That was just as time. foreshadowed as the whole um, Nick Leanne, Imran Toya. Isn't everything perfect? In, Aren't we all going to have a wonderful time? In Ollie Wobble land here. Isn't Cornwall going to be the best holiday I ever? I Cornwall. Nothing can go wrong. Yeah, so this, this was exactly the same, wasn't it? You just stay here looking after and Lily. And I'll get ice cream uh, and we'll be the perfect picture of domestic contentment. Mm. He comes back to find Shona counting to like 5,384,000 or something. Because they're playing hide and seek. And Shona's seeking, and she's just been left to count while Lily goes off, I don't know where to. But um, she went to Chesney, didn't she? What a boring kid. Well, she wants to on go and see Joseph. They, I don't they know what go, Joseph went around for. They go it. looking around for her, and she's at Chesney's. I mean, they managed to do the whole thing kid. without showing either Joseph or, or Lily. Ch- or, yeah, or anybody. Chesney's not a little kid anymore. He is allowed back on set. <laughs> <laughs> do you think the producer's like hang on oh yeah sorry you, no, there's sorry. probably a sign outside that says you must be this tall to enter, to enter. <laughs> it's like well we let Jack P. Shepherd in so go on <gasps> Sam you better go in as well Michael you can <laughs> shut up I know they go back at home Shona starts eating Lily's tea oblivious to the panic that she has caused and David is the, is the last straw for him he phones Roy and says, come and get, get rid of her. I can't deal with this. Yeah. And everyone acts the, re- the rest of the week like David was being really inconsiderate here. But she is eating food that he's prepared for his children. And I presume that he doesn't really have time or the inclination to make more now. And you do know, having listened to last week's podcast, everyone, that Gemma really, really does like fish fingers. So when Me? Sh- were you talking about that amazing fish finger sandwich fish finger that, sandwiches, they, that they were going to offer you and then say, but we could have had he's prime steak. Had steak. Yeah, yeah, so she didn't know there were steaks to be had. Also, poor, poor Shona, why hasn't she got food? <laughs> she's, she's hungry. She just she, takes what she, she wants. She, she, Shona just takes what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah comes home and David tells her what's happened and she says, oh, it'll, it'll get better. You know how we all used to be crazy at different points in our life? She says, I, I recovered from my crazy spell and I got sectioned. And remember how Nick's dealing with his brain injury? She didn't say, do you remember when you went psycho and David would have gone, which time? She also didn't say, and you know what? You know what mum's going through at the moment? We haven't quite been able to figure out what's gone wrong with her the last few d- years. But remember she's when completely she went ditty. to Thailand <laughs> for no reason? Or that whenever. scene was lovely with Sarah and David. I always enjoy and um yeah the scenes where it's just those two together tina yeah. and jack just got perfect together well it's obviously jack works very well with lots of different he characters. does but they, they've been working together as brother and sister on and off course for 20 years and that they know exactly yeah what makes each other tick and, and uh, it's just lovely and and, and yeah it's it's because Sarah and David like will fight sometimes, yeah. but they've got each other's back. They're yeah. their family, and it Aww. was really, really sweet. Uh, Sarah was brilliant this week, and oh, Adam was nowhere to be seen. So she, she doesn't need Adam, no Adam. She doesn't need no Gary. No, she just really, needs to marry honestly. her brother. <laughs> and that's not Half the only brother. insinuation Half of incest brother. that we get in a Coronation Street this week. Remember what Corey said to Adi about Asha? You love your twin. Yes. It's a, it's a bond that goes beyond what you can ken. Right. David's struggling to remember the woman he loves. What if this is as good as it gets? Don't know. On Friday, we have a re- really... I didn't like this. I didn't Running get it. Running joke of the episode. It wasn't funny at all or interesting at all. It's Shona saw a parakeet and she thinks that she should leave Weatherfield because they live in India and she could go anywhere she wants like a bird. I, do, I, I thought it was a bit laborious and I didn't. Weird. I I didn't like most of it. I thought, why why do they keep banging on about this parakeet? But at the end of the episode, when the Roy phones up or something, doesn't he? No, and he it was says, Nina. Yeah, it was Nina phones up and said that Roy saw a parakeet. Or did he? Yeah. Another parakeet has been seen anyway. Well, she saw and, a parakeet um, and she said that Roy says there's loads of them. Yeah, and and Shona is vindicated with saying there's a parakeet because but all I didn't. Along, I was not told there's no ever parakeet. I thought it was quite sweet. That, 
Oh, but no, but at what point did anybody really watching at home go, there's no way she's seen a parakeet? It's not exactly the most exotic bird to see, is it? There's, par- there's weird birds all over the place. Have you ever seen a parakeet in the wild? Aren't there loads of them in London? Oh, yeah, we did see one in London that yeah. time. But I didn't realise that they were in Manchester. Well, I, d- I, th- I just thought it was a bit weird. I thought it was also, Canada I thought, Goose I territory we up had, there. had it firmly established that Shona does not have the mental capacity to really lie and make stuff up. What they should have done, I mean, when, they, when you know when she was doing that brain test, you know, the one that Trump did? Yeah. She didn't know what a lion is, she didn't know what a rhino is, and it was like, parakeet! I know what parakeet <laughs> is, mate, especially <laughs> green ones. You're cured. Like, I think it not even Donald funnier. Trump know what that was. I think it would have been funnier if she saw a unicorn and it turned out it was just Tiny, <laughs> dressed up for a children's. What's happened to Tiny? We won't ask, glue factory. Maybe that's, maybe he's going to be Jeff's next victim. <gasps> yes! He probably could. He probably would. Right. What did you do to the dog? Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, she she decided she's going to pack up and leave. Oh dear. She's going to do a classic Corrie flit, isn't Why not? she? I don't Nina's need, I don't need a long time this. to decide to move to a different part of the country. I'm just going to go right now. Nobody else bothers. Take all my belongings in a little case, because yeah. that's all I've got, my, all my worldly <laughs> goods. Yeah. Nina phones and tells David what's going on at, that, at the point which David and Sarah are speaking and... He's saying he needs some time apart from Shona, but obviously not to the extent that she's going to move to India. <laughs> he catches her um, trying to leave and convinces her to come around for a barbecue before she makes a final decision. So she and Nina go around there. And I was very surprised that, that David could cater for a vegan or vegetarian at a barbecue at such short notice. Very good of him. But um, I, he wasn't really that bothered because he didn't even have any coal. <laughs> tell you what i loved nina's parasol she's so funny she is, she's great i she's know that so, she's t- she's totally ridiculous as a character she is and sometimes they overdo yeah. things with her i think and i'm yeah. not saying that there aren't people like this like i'd say like i'm kind of sometimes insinuating about shona's new personality transplants but yeah sometimes they go a bit too far with it but i i enjoyed oh, it i, I swanning in with this parasol when it wasn't even sunny <laughs> i know i couldn't help the weather um yeah so she comes shona starts going up and down on the trampoline and nina starts saying she gets oh, choice doesn't she trampoline or banana you can't have both no yeah, that was a really awkward scene because she's jumping up and down going, oh, I love trampolining. And David's like, oh, great. And she goes, I want a banana. And David says, you can't have a banana and go on the trampoline. And she goes, why not? And he says, because you'll slip and kill yourself. And she's like, oh, I'll just have trampoline then. And I've got a point to make about this, but I'll make it later. Okay. So Nina hears the vibration. <laughs> oh, you wait till I tell you about the great, tram- got a point, the great trampoline banana eating contest that went <laughs> off without a hitch. <laughs> and I think Coronation Street should know that because it was in the Guinness Book of World Records. But anyway, I said I'd get to it later. So anyway, she, she hears vibrations and David Nina says, does. it's just the trampoline. And then he goes around the front because he's getting a bit weirded out and he's not the only one. Well, but just by the whole Shona thing because well, she's yeah. just, yeah. Just literally infantile. jumping up and down, yes. What did you think when Nina said, I'm hearing, feeling vibrations? Did you suspect anything of that? Well, because, that's when I said... No, you, you is... said that I think there's going to be a sinkhole of it after that. No, I thought I said it then. No. That's you, when I started thinking it. You said, you said sinkhole when David went around the side. No, but I was thinking it when she started saying that. I was like, oh, no, no, no I was, what would they? I don't know. I was hearing phantom vibrations, at least hey. in the scene before. Because I was, all the time they were in the garden, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be the bit where the sinkhole comes. And I was kind of listing out for anything. And I was like, can I hear rumbling? I can't ask Gemma if she can hear anything because I don't want to spoil that there's going to be a sinkhole. I don't Do think, think there was. I don't think there was. I think you maybe need to watch it back. How, how... But I, yeah, I think it's, Freaky. you know, like, yeah, when I imagine my watch is buzzing, but actually it's not. Oh, wow. Well. So anyway, yeah, he goes around the side and Sarah comes and they're sort of having a little tiny talk. But there's not much time to talk because they hear a massive rumble. They return and there is no garden anymore. There is just a sinkhole and a upturned trampoline. Where's Shona gone? Oh, goodness. She could be dead. But that, no. was, that was an... That was an unnecessary cliffhanger, but I'm glad that it wasn't a break cliffhanger no. because if they'd gone into the break with like, has Shona fallen down the pit? I'd have been like, oh, <laughs> this is quite exciting. Um, but they, they didn't. They, and, and then they'd had her walking out the kitchen after the break. I'd have been, that's rubbish. So I'm glad they had her walking out the kitchen eating a banana quickly. If they wanted to recreate an authentic Cornish experience, they could just shove Ollie down the, the, the hole and say it's a tin 
Mine. Yeah, we were pole dark, Ollie. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, no, I, did you? I, I did wonder, like, has she, has, has Shona fallen down there? I partly thought that she was going to fall down there and then climb out and she'd have her old memory back. You know, did like, you really not think down, that? I, I that wouldn't have put it past Ollie. No, I did think for some time, uh, for, for a moment, has Shona fallen down there? That's quite exciting. Well, oh, well, I'm sure she'll be okay. What I thought was going to happen. She goes, she's actually gone into the kitchen. And she comes out eating banana. Yes. And then she says, oh, gosh, there's a big hole in the garden. I was half expecting her to be completely unimpressed by the fact that there was a big hole in the garden and to be like, oh, I thought that there were always giant holes in people's gardens and this happened all the time. Because that's the kind of like stupid, weird logic that she's operating on at the moment mm. that makes no real sense and is not very consistent. Um they don't really know what to do about this, as I wouldn't. And this has now made me really paranoid. So I'm glad we had a bit of a twist at the end here. Because we were watching this and I was like, what would we do if, if the Kasinko are pigs? I know this happens in real life, but I never thought it would happen in England. I thought it kind of only happens it, in... It, it feels like a bit of a foreign thing, in countries it? with fault lines and stuff like yes. that, where they have to worry about earthquakes. Yes. Um, so they're like, what do we do? What do we do? And then David says, can you hear water? And there's a burst pipe perhaps in there, so he decides to phone the water people. Shona's not helping. And she said, Didn't isn't there a body in there or something? Didn't somebody say there was a body body buried in there? And David's like, No, they moved it. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. That was funny. Um so David's phoned the water company, Nina's gone home because you know, nothing kills a barbecue like a sinkhole opening up in the floor and not having any sweet corn. That was when she said she made the comment, um, didn't David say the pits of hell? And did, or yeah. did Nina say, oh, no, they no. have teeth? Or and something? David says, yeah, Nina says there aren't any teeth or something like that. Um, David's going to make tea and then Shona comes and says she's going to help him. And then he says, I'm sorry I shouted at you. I just got angry. And she goes, oh, you shout at me when you're angry. I don't think you're a very nice person. And then walks off, which I would say, a ver- not the sign of a not very nice person is saying you're going to help someone with making the tea <laughs> and then buggering off and making up some kind of flimsy excuse as to why you're not going to help them. Because not being a very nice person is definitely not a reason no. to not make tea. So, um, the Waterman comes round and... Who you christened Pete Waterman. <laughs> in the spirit of the show currently. Yeah. Mr. Oh. Mr. Hatch and Mr. Peck and oh, Dr. Gosh, Ward. Oh, well, Dr. Ward, yeah. Right, okay, so... Um, he, Pete Waterman comes around and says, it's been a sewer his, collapse. His name is Craig Waterman. We no, it's Colin. Credit. Oh, Colin, that's right, it's Colin. Colin Waterman says, there's been a sewer collapse, the company's not liable, and you're, it's probably going to cost you a lot of money. Sorry. And Shane is, like, chatting him up and saying he looks sexy like he's... Uh, okay. Oh, um, Luke Skywalker. Oh, yeah. In his he rebel had, he had, um, yeah, outfit he had his with his white... Yellow uh, glasses on, didn't he? No, he had, he had a white helmet and, like, orange overalls. I thought he had like some a funny rebel. tinted... Anyway, um, he goes out and says, oh, I'm going to let you sit down and check and sink in. And so Shane is like, ha ha, I get the metaphor for, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so she and David start talking and, um, a bit of a and he's it, like, yeah. maybe you're not such an evil person after all. And David's like, you wait till you hear about Hitler. Your mind's going to be blown. <laughs> Colin comes back and says, I don't think you want to hear me say this and I'm not officially allowed to tell you, but I think your house is going to fall down. <laughs> so you should probably leave. <laughs> <laughs> so... They get going to go and live with Audrey. And Ray comes round and says, don't know if you know this, but Audrey's not in the show anymore. Would you like to stay at my hotel instead? <laughs> Audrey's shielding actually, at the moment. We've actually got the set just just around the corner from here. Yeah. On the top of the police station, if you'd like to come. Anyway, if I was an evil criminal like Ray, I would not build my hotel on top of a police station because he <laughs> no, was asking for trouble. For trouble. Um, I guess he's not having very much business, so he offers them all five-star accommodation. Even the people that aren't living there, like Shona and Nina, for some reason. Well, yeah, never mind. We won't, I don't understand that, but we won't go into ne- it. Ne- Nina's... N- Shona can't... Oh. Is it because Nina's been living with Shona, so she's in a bubble with her, and somebody has to look after Shona, but maybe I thought, David goes a, I thought she had a social worker. Never mind him. We haven't seen... I know him he's, since, he's not uh, in her bubble anymore. Since so. the filming stopped. And from Monday, only six people are allowed to be in a scene together. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, you can't stay Isn't here. Isn't nice Ray's, chap? Ray's like, I'm so nice. I'll let you stay what in my hotel. What a benevolent gent. Five stars because you're my neighbours and you're in need. And I thought this was weird at the time, but then we find out a bit later 
why he's doing it. Don't tell us yet. But before then, um, at the hotel, David and Shona are chilling in the bar. Shona's just been in the hot tub, but inexplicably has put her leather jacket back on, even though she's hot. <laughs> um, David says he needs to get to know the old Shona. And she says, like, old times. And he says, like, new times. And does he do Aww. double finger guns? I can't remember. I don't know. Um, that was very sweet. It would have been sweet if it not, was not for one glaring problem, but I'll get to that in a minute. Was it the plastic uh, pears that are on the jar in the bar in this five-star hotel? They were very visibly artificial pears. I know they're supposed to be, just like a bit of decor, but I would have thought that somebody like Ray might know. be able to Maybe come up with something a bit more at market. End of episode twist. Ooh, this wasn't in the synopsis, and I didn't read the synopsis beforehand, but I went and checked afterwards. So, Colin, Colin Waterman, is actually an <laughs> evil minion of Ray, and he's the one that made the sinkhole appear under Ray's instructions. And Ray is very irate at the fact that the sinkholes appeared during the daytime, because apparently to Ray, having a sinkhole appear at night is a totally normal and unsuspicious thing, but were it to happen during the day, questions might be asked. Mm. And, and Colin has to point out that sinkholes are slightly more complicated than he might have given them credit for. And, it, you know, he can't actually precisely control the time at which they appear, yeah. which I think is fair enough. He's got a big envelope full of money and his he seems to have been instructed to make David worried and so he will sell up the house. And, and this here is, we go, here we go. Finally, finally this plot comes back again. waiting for progress on for months and like months and months. seven, eight months. Ever since... Ever Who was since it that Daniel saw? and um, Daniel and Bethany. Who was it that saw the the plans though? Which viewer? I can't remember. Somebody told Very us. Very eagle eyed viewer. You. Sorry. Ever since somebody saw the plans that Ray has hatched out one side of the street in a nefarious plot to take over and build a giant hotel, build something or other that nobody's going to like, like a big. What could it be the worst thing? A big fart factory. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm scoring this week's episodes out of now. Yeah, his nefarious plan is now well underway and he's not prepared. He's prepared to break a few eggs to make this omelette, I, I see. <laughs> to make it a bit sulfurous. Yeah. Um, yes, interesting, mm, isn't it? That was. Um, and I also wonder whether people watching who aren't crazy, like you say, invested like we are, have, have any inkling that there is something going on and why is Ray? Do, what's the what bits are they putting together? Because we are thinking here. Well, Ray's not had very much to do at all this year, has he? He's, no, he's been we're really off going... the, ra the radar. <laughs> we're watching this going. Ah, oh, this is clearly plot part of Ray's nefarious plot from seven months before that we saw in one small screenshot that somebody sent us. And also, do you remember he owns the garage now? And nobody's mentioned nobody's it since mentioned then. Nobody's mentioned that. We don't even know where the fizz knows. And, and what's gonna? So I assume at some point he's gonna make Gary sell him the garage, but we still don't know why. But if you're watching at home, why? what are you thinking if you're not listening to this podcast or engaging in any kind of fan theory or conspiracy stuff yeah. or looking on the you, internet? You wouldn't have are a you clue, like going, would you? It's like, why, why, why does, does he, why want, does he want David's house? It doesn't make any sense. No. Well, there you go. Now you know. If you listen to this podcast, you're ahead of the curve. Yes. I'm, I'm really glad that this story is revving up again. I mean, it, I, I don't know whether it's going to go off the ball again for a bit. I'm hoping there's going to be a lot more plat stuff next week. Well, if you're trying to take over an entire street, you've got to bide your time. Yeah. And, and is it just David's house? Yes, that's the first one along. Is he going to go after... So next um, is... Is he going to go after Yasmin's house? Yasmin and then and Sally. Sally's house. How far does he need to go? Is he going to take over Audrey's as well? Oh, that could it. Oh, gosh. Maybe. Um, yeah, so that's, that's very exciting stuff. When Ray came along and offered his hotel up to David and Shona... I wrote down a note, does Ray want to buy the house? So when it came at the end, oh, it was right. like, oh, he does. And I, I kind of wish, I almost kind of wish that I hadn't predicted it because then it would have been even more shockingly amazing. But what I didn't predict was that Colin Waterman was the one that <laughs> caused the sinkhole to understand happen by blowing up the happened. sewer or something. It reminded I'm, me of that uh, Cockney bloke from Ocean's Eleven going yeah, down. Blow the bloody doors off. That's my good <laughs> That's a different the, film. The Italian. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I, I thought that. <laughs> do you think that? Went, what, so, like, is, what did you? What film did you reference? Ocean's Eleven. Do you, you know, think the they put a little, a little uh, Chinese acrobat inside a money cage and yeah. wheeled it down inside the sewer, and then he sort of unfolded himself and poked a hole in it, and then trundled all, all away with the rest of the human waste? They probably wanted to film, but they just couldn't due to our current filming restrictions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, both of us when at the and that. It was the second to last scene, wasn't it? Because there were two big twists in tonight's episode. When they cut to Ray's office and <sighs> and the bloke was there, we were just we both looked at each other like <gasps> Oh Very I love that. It was so it was so ridiculous. What a stupid I can't believe that you can make a sinkhole under someone's house. I don't know if I'm work for the sewers. I d- right. There's so many implausible things that had to happen. You have to ignore to enjoy the storyline, which I'm perfectly happy to do. But you have to believe that you can, like, pinpoint, with pinpoint accuracy, take someone's house out using the sewers somehow in a way that no one will ever discover to such a precise way that you can do it at almost, like, within a 12-hour window, right? Mm. You also have to believe that there's only one guy working on the other end of the phone at the water <laughs> yeah. department who also answers all the calls personally. Yeah, that bit was through. maybe a bit of a stretch, that the person who made also, it was also the person. Yeah. Do, do, do you think at the, at the water company, they're like, oh, there's a sinkhole that's appeared. Does anyone want to take this job? It's, fr- it's Friday afternoon. Ask I'm Colin sorry, Waterman. guys. He loves it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I'll stuff. do it, yeah. Um, also, the fact that Ray knows who to get to bribe to make a sinkhole appear under someone's house. Like, what? How, I, I don't what think that. I think so Ray's just sitting got around. his finger in many, many pies. he just sits around and, like, he's, he's like, got book of contacts hey, Colin, your arm. wouldn't it be funny if you could make a sinkhole? I bet you couldn't make a sinkhole under someone's house. And Colin goes, yeah, I bet I could. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't particularly mind. You, you're right. Oh, no, it's a it bit of a matter. stretch I, I of think credibility. Sometimes yeah. I'll sit there and there'll be a storyline and I'll go, actually, I think you'll find that the uniforms in that department of the hospital are usually pink, so the whole scene was ruined. And then there'll be a scene like this where I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Whatever. sinkhole. <laughs> what, what, what do you think about the sinkhole? Because I can't remember how it's long crazy. I've... crazy. I don't know how long I've known about it. It's one of these things that I wish I hadn't known. Oh, stop spoiling things, Coronation Street, please. Stop looking it up. But I don't... I just go on Twitter. So do I. Go I, don't, I don't know how you... I don't know how... I spend more time arguing it. with people about Kate Middleton's outfits. She does, everybody. Do, she does, about... till date in the night. Mm-hmm. My first reaction months ago when I saw about the sinkhole was that's bloody ridiculous what are they doing now Flat that's sinkhole. so stupid Why? but then as we got closer to this <laughs> week I was like we get that, tense that, 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 maybe that's what Coronation Street needs to shake it up a bit maybe that could be quite just, good oh I wonder if anyone's going to be in hole. danger oh I wonder what's going to happen is there going to be a big stunt it, could this be something that might lead into the 60th anniversary is David's house going to fall into the pit they have had a house collapse on Coronation Street before and number it's been seven. a very long time since number 7 collapsed in 1960 something and I've lost track because she's like, just giving me a post oh, it now for some reason. So, well, can you pause it for a minute because I want to take a pill. Okay, Gemma is going to take a pill. I'm going to press pause. Pause. Unpause. What were we talking Sorry. about? I took a pill. No, what were we talking about before that? I don't know. I completely I'm forgotten. Listening. It was only about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Stop and listen to what you said. Yeah, oh, I was going to say, is, do you think, <laughs> would they do it? Were they going to do it? Was this the big Hollywood stunt? Could they make number six collapse? I kind of would like it, and I know it's an iconic house and it's an iconic set, but wouldn't that be kind of cool? What David's house just collapsed? If it does, well, the, because this that is side right. of the street has say, looked yeah. the same for thirty years now. No. In the early years of Coronation Street, that side of the street changed often. That's didn't what it? I'm just about to say. The one thing, well, I've been taught many things through our watch of vintage episodes of Coronation Street, but if there's one thing I'm definitely sure about is that there is only one unchanging, iconic side of Coronation Street, and that is the terraced houses side. And everything that takes place on the other side is nebulous and up for debate. Mm. But so, even, honestly, apart from number seven collapsing. Well, number seven, yeah, coming and going. <laughs> but as far, you know, mm. it's all very much static and it has not changed apart from that one thing. Whereas the other side of the street has been community centres. It's been the and Mission, it was the Mark and... Britain Warehouse, it was the Masonettes for a little bit. Yes, the there's other, been loads pre- of stuff there. Masonettes, Masonettes. There's been loads of different stuff on the other side of Coronation Street. And is it time? Is this going to be Ian McLeod's big legacy? Because God knows the Baileys aren't working out. <laughs> Who knows how long they're going to last? <laughs> 
is his big legacy going to be trashing the other half of Coronation Street? And, like, that would be a kind of a cool thing to do to the producer coming in after you. Just, like, blow up one side of the street and go, what, whatever goes there is yours, up to you. It would be a bold move, but honestly, yeah. like I said, they used to do it That's what lot. I mean. It's not actually as bold as you think it is. No, and, and back then it was all cardboard sets and everything, so it was probably easier Oh, to... it's blown over in a wind. <laughs> it's probably easier to do, but maybe it's time. I'll tell you what, though, the one thing that's making me think, I don't know whether they would do it, is they did a massive factory renovation, and would they yeah. bother to go to the trouble for all of that if they were then going to knock it down a year later? Well, also, they built... barely show actually, any of it in the meantime. Like you said before, it was cardboard. Now it's an actual physical set, and I don't think that they could blow it up without people noticing no, you're right. But but the thing is, though, mm. your point about the factory being renovated is a good one. But that means that if that if they were to go, well, we're going to keep the factory, that would mean that nothing that he does to number seven, num- any of those houses is going to be helpful to him because he's got the garage and he's going to want something to bridge the gap, which is the factory. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's going to go after the factory at some point, isn't he? He's it? going to go after the factory. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and, and the cabin. Yeah, and the cabin. Because Kathy and Brian were moaning oh, about not having were. any money recently, yeah. weren't they? Oh. Maybe what will happen is um, Nick and Sarah will suddenly go, why isn't anybody fulfilling these orders that we've got for these pants? And then Sean will go, there are no, there are no sewing machines here. <laughs> And they'll say, we're going to have to sell up. We need pre- premises, which actually has a factory inside Why it. Why not? We'll say, won't we? Anyway, very exciting twist that was. I wonder as well, Nina now knows. Nina now knows. Nina now knows that there was a dead body underneath the plaques at some point. She was there for a reason. There wasn't... And I know she's been friends with Shona and she's been in the scenes with her and everything. Doesn't everybody know that there was a body there, though? They 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 found it. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought I had a really big good theory. I thought I had a big theory there. I think Nina would just Nina also be cool go, about Hang it. Hang on a minute. Nina's would be chill about it. She'd just write in her journal or something. Uh, Fizz and Tyrone was it, or somebody ran their their van into? Yeah, like, oh, Gail's I've, been, I've been waiting to drop that theory Bomb on shell. you, and it's really, I think I've got it mixed up with the Rick Nealon one. No, that body's gone, as David pointed out. Uh, Although I'm surprised I'm they didn't there. find some other ones lurking. Mm. Oh, well. Anyway, good stuff. I did think that at the beginning of the week, this was a bit of a letdown story. There was all all the other stories, the dev one, the... Um, what else did we have this week? I've got already. The Yasmin story, the um, the Ollie Wobble story, or the, the stuff with Imran and Toya was great. And Monday, the David and Shona story was was dragging a little bit. And I'm glad that um, it took an interesting twist. Although, like with all of these things that they hype up beforehand, in some ways I was left a bit thinking, oh, wouldn't it wouldn't have been nice if we'd seen the grass cave in, you know, rather than... I guess FX do it. R- rather than them going to discover it. Or, you know, wouldn't it have been better if somebody had been more peril, you know, if Shona had been hanging onto a, a twig <laughs> dangling down it. That the sinkhole was smaller than I thought it was, and I know it's really? quite a small garden. Yeah, I like I how deep it was. I want to know how they did was. it. They did, it was huge. I know it's good. Was it? Was it a CG? Are, are we just being stupid? No, I don't know. Did they actually dig a giant hole? No, they couldn't have done. I don't know. Or was it, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I really thought I was the expect- scenes where they were filming up from the bottom of the hole. I was like, how are they doing that? That, that must it have must been just a green be CG. screen. It's thing. really good. It was good. It was good. I was wondering as well. I did. I knew that the sinkhole would happen this week, but I didn't know when. So when Lily went missing on a Monday, <laughs> I wondered whether she went out of the sinkhole. And I wouldn't mind oh, if well. they lost Lily as a casualty I... to this sinkhole story. But no, they're already killing fine. off Ollie soon, so you probably can't have two child deaths in the you. same season. Um, yeah, I, I did wonder whether there'd be more peril because I didn't feel that the missing Lily story was really that exciting. No, I, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, where's no Lily? No one cares about Lily. Anyway. going to find her and everything. But yeah, if she'd, if, if she'd have disappeared and then the sinkhole had opened. That would have been. And they'd have been world. like, we can't find her anyway. Where is she? Oh she's my gosh, she's fallen the down the sinkhole. That would have been quite <laughs> that exciting. That would have been really good. Why didn't they do that? Mm. I also would have liked it. Oh, come on. And I know there was the trampoline bit and everything. 
I kind of would have liked it if the episode had opened with David in bed or whatever and there was a rumbling and then he kind of, it, it's dark and he goes outside and, and the sinkhole was there. I, I, I think that might have been a, a really exciting a opening to the show. Whereas as it was, I was, because oh, I knew it was going to happen, I was waiting for it to moan, happen. Moan, moan. I wanted it to be a surprise at the beginning. I just want to take my hat off to Coronation Street for doing the world's soap's first socially distant sinkhole storyline. Yeah, well done, well done. Well done. Um, the other thing I wanted to say... Just, I'm telling you we'll off. get on to the third story in a minute, everybody. This is see what's going to be like when it goes back to six episodes next week. I'm telling you off for moaning about the storyline, but I just want to have a big complaint about Shona. I think I've come to the edge of my tolerance now for this storyline. I don't understand what's going on with her. I don't get if this is real, if this is something that really happens to people. Everything that she does and says is very inconsistent, and I feel as though it, I don't know if I'm supposed to think it's funny or not. I mean some of what she says is incredibly comical because it is because that's what humor is i keep saying this humor is the unexpected and when you say something that's out of place or not what people expect you to say they will laugh and that's what you know sometimes people get upset when when that happens if they don't mean for it to be funny Mm. but shona seems to roll with the punches i don't know if this is a real thing that happens to people we got made fun of because we kept saying that shona got shot on the head we know that she didn't get shot in the head. It's just funnier to say yeah. <laughs> that she got shot in the head. It's a classic really got, pull through the face. Yeah, she got shot in the stomach or somewhere and then she had a, her brain was drained of oxygen for a time. Yes. And so she had a brain problem she because of that. She was extubificated, wasn't she? Which was another term that <laughs> came up. I don't think that's the same thing. It, but no, I'm just saying. That, that's, oh, yeah. That's when, that, yeah. That, that was the whole thing. And I learned that word, ex extubation it was wasn't it and then they brought it up in the ollie wobble stories the line oh, well like, done. i know what that word means i learned it in coronation street earlier this year um anyway is is this a real thing that happens is, are we supposed to think this is funny or not i don't understand coronation street is really good at some of these storylines with working with people and talking about you know real life and charities and i just i just, I just don't think it doesn't feel like that kind of story but then it's very jarring when you have something like Ollie's like mitochondrial disease that they've re- like meticulously researched and they're doing it very sensitively and, and, and they're the, working um, with charities and they've worked Jeff with people. Jeff and Yasmin stories, no? and, and then you get Shona who was shot in the head <laughs> and now can't understand metaphors and wants to take her top off and have sex in the middle of the road. Mm. And it's funny and it's being, I feel like it's being played for laughs. It is, it really, really is. The other thing that I want to say, and I find this incredibly <laughs> icky and weird and I can't get over this, Shona's got a serious lack of impulse control and no no inhibitions and no understanding of, like, social rules, right? So in, in, in a way, in a sense, she's very childlike in her behaviour mm. and... and, and she doesn't understand consequences very well. We saw that when she burned her hands, right? Yeah. Can she actually consent to anything sexual with David were it to crop up? Oh, I don't know. And is, they, is it not a bit creepy? Is anyone else icked out by David lusting after a woman who has the mental capacity of, at times, a toddler? I don't think he is lusting after Well, all right, okay, but... He will at some point, right? Yeah. And he is... They are still married, right? Legally, there's nothing wrong with them having fun, as it were, mm. right? But morally, I'm finding this honestly weird. Yeah. The fact that he said that... There's a kind of insinuation they might end up sleeping together in the hotel because she wants to stay in his bed or something. Mm. I just think she's got a limited capacity to understand what is going on she obviously still has the same kind of sexual urges as she used to, and they are married. But just this, I'm just really finding I'm struggling with the fact that her reactions to things are very, very childlike at times. Mm. Like playing hide and seek and jumping on a trampoline. Is that the sort of thing you look at as a man and go, <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad my wife is now like a child. Well, and he, I can... The thing that David didn't do, that's when he went outside and was like, this isn't working. He wants her to be Back an to adult show... again I know, yeah. so that he can make adult movies but i can't <laughs> i can't root for them as a couple because shown is not in her right mind yeah. and she's child she's like a child mm. so i don't know what i'm supposed to be thinking about this i hope that she grows up soon 
so that they can bonk. <laughs> can she? Why are you invested in it in that way, Grace? I'm not. I'm not. Anyway, then we've got to move on. Gemma, before Sorry. we... Sorry. No, it's fine. Before we move on, though, Gemma, I need to ask you a very important question. Oh, what? If you had the choice... <laughs> what? Would you have a banana or a trampoline? You can only have God. one. How long do I have to go on the trampoline for? You don't have to go on the trampoline until you choose to go on the trampoline, surely. I know, but I should probably go on the trampoline instead of eating, shouldn't I? A big fake. <laughs> you shouldn't offer me one or the other. It should be get on the trampoline and you can have a banana if you want it. <laughs> don't jump up. too hard, otherwise you might cause a single. <laughs> Do you think that she like precipitated it for, to happen? No. Because because the guy did say it was supposed to happen in the night. Uh, and yeah, and they said there was a rumbling so. when she was jumping up and down. Maybe, maybe. David said adults aren't supposed to go on that. I don't know. I think they were, because that looked like a pretty sturdy trampoline yeah, to no, me. Didn't it? Right, let's move on. You told me to, to move Serious on. Serious storyline. Serious case of the Ollie Wobbles. Um... Do you have to do a disclaimer? What? This is serious and we think this is serious. Yes. Um, so Leanne's talking to Toya about Ollie on Monday's episode saying, oh, do you know this up and coming Cornwall trip that maybe other people might have thought we've already been on and that's why the story's not been going for <laughs> a little while. That's why it happened. You know, that, you know that summer's nearly over. You know September's the The time when people time go to Cornwall. To go to Cornwall. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so this, this Cornwall trip's coming up and it's going to do Ollie a world of good. Uh, we also learn in that scene that Imran's got an assessment with the fostering people today, although Toya's worried about how the whole Susie thing's going to look, i.e. I had the time a, I the time I kidnapped took, someone's baby. No, she didn't kidnap a baby. She only got shot in the she, head. What? She only got shot in the head. Toya kidnapped a baby. And really got a really poultry through the face. Toya <laughs> and Eva conspired to pass Eva's baby Susie off as Toya's, which had been... Uh, surrogated by a woman called Jackie. I Jackie. remember it's all coming back to me. So if people find out about that, they might think maybe she's not the best. Maybe she's mom. not a good judge. But of it character. turns out that the uh, Toya needn't worry about that at all because it turns out that they have been digging deep into Imran's side of the family and they find out um, that his I thought this family, was really interesting. the Habibs, Sarah and um, Hassan, yeah. tried to kidnap Rana that one time. Remember and take her to everybody? Pakistan to get her married off. Yeah, and they say, and oh, your involved. family are a bit dodgy, Mr. Habib. I don't know whether I can trust you to look after Ch- I feel bad for Imran. It's like Toya was saying, it's, this is literally nothing to do with, with you. Why? Well, I think part of it was to find out how he would react if they brought it up. And he didn't react very well. No, he, he didn't. He said he got defensive and confrontational, which is not... <sighs> you don't want to be giving foster children off to somebody who didn't do anything wrong. But if you bring it up, they go, what do you mean? What are you talking maybe about? They, worry, they might worry that Sarah might turn up and try and take the foster kid away. And Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, you got to, honestly though, you're responsible. I mean, when you want to adopt a, a dog, they come round your house to see what your fence looks like. They're taking over a kid here. Mm. They got to bring up some uncomfortable memories. Anyway, he's a bit um, embarrassed about how this went. He apologizes to Toya and thinks he's ruined their chances. Oh, don't worry, it's going to get worse than that. But she says, "Look, let's just go out to let's go to dinner with Leanne and uh, Nick and Steve. We've been in." in, in Invited over, it's going to be a good distraction from this whole fostering malarkey because you know we've been going on so much about this fostering story for so long. Yeah, it's um, been our life's passion. And uh, yeah, and he's like, yes, Ollie's a very special child, and we need no, to we, we need spend to we time spend time with as Ollie much time before he, dies. before he dies. Exactly, he doesn't say yeah. that, but we know what you mean, Imran. We've got Wednesday. to spend time. I, Imran's like, let's spend time with him now when he's not allowed on screen. <laughs> it's inc- it's I incredible that they, have, they haven't. They've not even shown any stock footage or not stock footage. You know, stock <laughs> footage of him of a child in a bed. Look how different Ollie is. They haven't even done the bit where you put pillows under it, under the duvet and go, Ollie, you oh, want to get asleep. up for dinner? No, he's sleeping. Because <laughs> no, they said at the time, didn't they? Like we can't have the the actor who plays Ollie in this story. But don't worry, we've got some just random footage of him did sitting they? around. Yeah, they did, and we haven't seen any of this. But, I mean, it feels like the way the story's gone now, anything that they would have filmed, like, at the beginning of the year probably isn't going to be I think they might have some hospital bed scenes of him, maybe. Yeah, but he's in, like, he's in ICU now. I know, Spoiler but wasn't alert. he in... Didn't he... Hasn't he been in... I don't remember. Anyway... Um, Let that be a lesson to Wednesday you, everybody. Is Always their... film lots of footage of children yeah. in hospital beds. Yeah, because you never know when a global pandemic know. might strike. Mm-hmm. Just like sinkholes come out Any of nowhere. Moment. I think Ray caused... COVID. pandemic <laughs> um 
yeah, they had their dinner party on Wednesday. And they, like I said earlier, they had a lovely time. Oh, Isn't Cornwall oh, going to be wonderful? Oh, Think of all the surfing we'll oh, be able yeah. to do. We're going through the engine houses at Travel Port. The, the ice creams, lovely stuff. Go to the Eden Project, maybe. Oh, Ollie, yeah, Ollie's lovely. Ollie's all over the Eden Project. Children love it. <laughs> Flambard's theme park. That's where Ollie needs to go to. And that's a lovely place to go to in Cornwall Never if been. you're a child. I, I, I spent many an hour there when I was little. Sounds terrible. So, Nick says to Imran and Toya, cheers for coming over. Um, you've really you know, lifted our spirits and good luck with the whole fostering thing. So that's quite nice that they're getting his approval because he hadn't been too sure about it before. Steve's yeah. also round later chilling with Nick and he agrees to stay for tea. Oh yeah, they didn't have tea, did they? They just had time together. Oh, Steve's... so what? Poor old Imran and Toya come around for dinner. dinner. And or, then, and then maybe they, they did. Maybe they, maybe just they hang the around room. awkwardly for hours and hours waiting to get fed, and in the end, they just go home because the aunt's like, "I ain't giving them I'm giving them vegetarian food." No, I can't remember what. <laughs> no, because they weren't having vegetarian with Steve because he they they're going to have sausages, aren't they? Because Steve has a flashback to Sausage Gate. Maybe well, may, oh, look. Let's not speculate too let's much not. about what. Face, all you need to know about this story on Wednesday is what could possibly go wrong. Nothing because we all live a perfect so life. Maybe yes, our had... child is going to die at some point, but for now, everything is just fine. Well, they had dinner, didn't they? So dinner is lunch, and oh, then yes, they, they had, had tea, which is dinner. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> there are plenty of people Friday. listening to this getting really mad now. <laughs> Oliver is not doing so well. Apparently in his bedroom he's been having an extra long seizure and they've been happening more frequently too. But, so, but Cornwall, nothing uh, can go wrong. Sorry, Leanne. Nick and Steve convince Leanne to take him to the hospital. She's determined to come he's to... He's fine, he doesn't to need to go. go to Cornwall, come high, he hella high water. Cornwall. So uh, she, she eventually agrees, yeah, okay, maybe we should go to the hospital. And sadly they are told that Cornwall is off the cards and Oliver has to go and see a consultant later. I wish that they like had said something like, because of COVID, we don't, and, and the hospital capacity is better for you to stay here. They kind of made it sound like you can't go on holiday if you're ill. And that's not really the case. It's like the hospitals are better there. Because that's one of the things that people were talking about when they were talking about holidays and tourists and people with second homes. It's not so much that they don't want, well, it is partly they don't want people moving around so much. But it's also to do with the hospital capacity of each area and they're not set up for hundreds of people coming to Cornwall and then getting sick, mm. whether that's from coronavirus or having mitochondrial disease. Yeah. Anyway, mm. new twist time, returning Uh-oh. character. Who is Nick it? is outside the hospital and he sees Natasha Blakeman. She went, oh, I dropped my thing. Oh, what a coincidence. Who's Natasha Blakeman? Gemma's going to tell you because she just read her Curipedia entry before we read, <laughs> watched the pod, uh, started recording the podcast. Obviously, I know who she is. She, I know that Gemma explain. I don't remember. She's an ex, she's a old, she's a hairdresser. Yes. Right. And she used to live on, no, work on the street. Yeah. And the main thing I remember about her is that she was dating Nick and they, she got pregnant and then something happened and she got upset or mad or something and basically he thought there was no future. She split up with Nick and got an with abortion. Nick and got, she had an abortion. Or and then she? Gail got in trouble because she was a receptionist at the medical centre and she broke into the medical files, looked up on the computer in the medical centre that Natasha had this abortion. So that was a fact on the screen in black and white. And that's why Gail got fired from working there because she confronted Natasha. And then in revenge, Natasha told everybody what she thought of them and then left in a blaze of glory. That's pretty much it. And we've said it. many times on the show that Natasha Blakeman had one of the best exits of a coronation of street, of a, a very minor, minor character. character. She had one of the best exits. She was in the show she for She basically two just and went around years. going like, hey you, hey you, hey you, you're cool, see you later, suckers, I'm off. Yeah, as the, as the explosion happens behind her. Yeah. yeah she, she didn't look back. No, I mean... I think that was it. So we, we were definitely left under no illusions. Natasha has had, a, she's aborted Nick's baby. Yep. She is definitely not pregnant. And, and it wasn't we just, seem to have the medical you know, records to prove it. There was a medical, there's definitely a medical record of this abortion taking place that Gail looked up on the computer. Yes. That yes. is right, isn't it? I'm sure, I'm sure that's right. Oh. Well, there was so even probably... a bit where somebody asked her for a scan. They could see a baby scan. Oh, yeah. And she printed it off, something off the computer yeah. and gave it to them. Because that happened 10 years ago today yeah 
the, the, the other thing you need to remember about Natasha is... Well, actually, this is not really important at all. She was a very, very, very minor character for the first year and a half that she was in it. I think she was in the show for two and a half years. And she was literally the side character at the salon. We don't... She came in and she, yeah. was, she was there with Audrey and Maria. And I always used to think, why, why does this character exist? She doesn't do anything. It, it, it wasn't like, you know, when Maxine joined the salon and she was a bit of a bit character to Fiona. I don't think there's anyone like that now. There's people that are like that unintentionally. I mean, Sean is the closest I you get, so. except we know Sean is a character and he does have sometimes things to do. But yeah, you're right. It, it's like it's like if Tall Mark from the uh, from the prima donna, you know him that appeared in oh, a right, month or yeah. two ago. If, he, if, he was a if suddenly he starts going out with Kathy or something, so she was an absolute nothing character, and then they decided to give her a bit of a personality for a year, and then and then that was it. So when I heard that Natasha was coming back. I wasn't filled with joy or glee or anything about this returning character because in my head she was incredibly minor yet she had an amazing exit and now they're kind of going back on that by bringing her back and I'm not saying that I'm not excited to see her again I think I've seen her talking on social media a little bit recently I think I'll give her a chance oh, yeah, definitely. because I, I, she was in it so little I haven't formed an opinion on a one way or another. Yeah. I almost feel like I haven't had the chance to. True. Yet, I have seen lots of people going, oh, I love Natasha. Natasha was brilliant. She's amazing. And I oh. wonder, are you just remembering her exit? I think people are, honestly. Because uh, man, I'm sure that... people can tell us we're wrong, but look, she know. did have a fantastic exit. Yeah. It could be undeserved for such a minor character. Yeah. But I don't I... see much to her. I think um, the fact they gave her that exit and she handled it so well that people still remember her all these years later, despite the fact that she was a very minor character, means that the actress can handle stuff like that and could be really good fun. Yeah. And they've established that this character is vindictive. I don't like the idea of her coming back as like, oh, I'm a reformed mum and I, I'm, I'm back for help because I'm a single mum and that's my personality now. Think you know what I mean? Just spoiled the end of the episode to us there, Gemma. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Let's go. So we'll get to there quickly. So they have a bit of an awkward exchange. This is Steve, Nick and Natasha in the um, Coronation Street Studios. I mean, Weatherfield Hospital car park. And she's now got two salons with a third on the way. So things are... She's, I think she meant to say babies. <laughs> she's, she's doing pretty well for herself. Can I just point out that she said she was there for a routine dermatology appointment? She did. And one of our very good friends is a dermatology consultant who has not done any work because they're not allowing them to do any work. Ah, oh, so that's how you knew she was lying. I was like, you big liar. You're not there for a dermatology appointment. <laughs> they... And then Steve said her face looks fine and it's not about your face. It's about everything else. You can get all kinds of weird stuff. He's showing me pictures. <laughs> Nick tells her about Oliver. He, well, he doesn't tell her everything because she's like, oh, I hope, I hope Ollie's going to be okay. Because she hasn't been told the full and they gory accidentally details in... of it. Nick and Steve accidentally insinuate that they're like co-parenting oh, yeah, in a gay relationship. Yeah, our, our son is in the hospital. <laughs> She's like, yeah, oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, she it, it kind of ends, like I said, a bit awkwardly. She says, oh, it's lovely seeing you again. But then when they walk off, she has a pained expression. Ooh, what secret could she be hiding? Meanwhile, inside the hospital, well, not meanwhile, the next scene, Steve <laughs> tells Nick that she sounded a bit suspicious when she said she was just there for a dermatology appointment because she looked really good, like you just said. But can't worry about that now because... Nobody is going to a hospital for a routine appointment for anything. No. Um, and they don't want to tell Leanne, I think they possibly said. Speaking of which, she pops too much out of Ollie's uh, ward. And she says he's fine. Yeah, she, he's all okay. He stops Everything's fine. now. Everything's great. So Let's you go, to you go in, Steve, because I'm you a go bit for, You go to Cornwall without me and I'll catch you up, yeah. is basically what she's trying to say. Steve goes in, but before long, he's back out again because Ollie's having another seizure. And we find out later that he's been taken to ICU. He's being incubated. The seizure no, won't intubated. stop. intubated. Oh, I thought they said incubated. Yeah. <laughs> like a little... Like I don't little understand children, egg. everybody. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> No, like a little tiny hen's egg being rotated. Oh, no, I thought that the minute they put him into a little thing to Well, like keep a baby, like for a premature baby. Yeah. We're not doctors. They have incubators. What, they the shouldn't children? have two words that sound too similar to each other at hospitals and children's wards. They, they definitely intubated him because they were talking about extubation. Was he intubated at the incubator, though? They don't talk about ex... What is it called? 
excubating <laughs> people. That's what take them out of here. Is that when you get out of bed in the morning? <laughs> okay, fine. He's been intubated. I'm pretty sure he has, yeah. Leanne wants to go and see him and, and, and the doctor's there saying, I'm, I'm, you know, he's not even going to know who Basically, you are. And Leanne said, yes, he will. He will, he's fine, everything's fine. And then she's like, Steve, we might not be going to Cornwall today. Mm. Don't panic. Phone the Airbnb, tomorrow. tell you, we'll be on the road tomorrow. So anyway, they go into the, the, the doctor's room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just laughing here because at the time we were saying, what's happened to Dr. Ward? This must be her superior Dr. Hospital. Yeah, this is Dr. Hospital. She is now Dr. Hospital. That's the character's name of everybody on the podcast. She, so I am, deal with it. Yeah, she says, I am actually better at this job than Dr. Ward. Yes, I am but not quite, hospital. not quite so good at Dr. NHS. What, if it gets serious, we might have to call Dr. NHS. But for now... Dr. Hospital, me, is here to tell you some bad news. Yes. Ollie's still seizing. They yeah. can't get him to stop. They're yeah. like, be prepared for, for the worst, basically. And yeah. we don't know whether we can extubate him. That might make things worse. He might not recover from this. Yeah. Prepare so yourself. So Steve, Steve, in um, one of his rare serious moments, is saying, look, can you give us a bit of time to get I like this. And, and Dr. Hospital's like, oh, yeah, fine. You just sit here. I, yeah, I've got nothing else to do. And my cup of tea. You can go literally anywhere else. This is my have, room. You go out. Hit this this is my room. It might look like some other consultants and doctors' rooms that have been on Coronation Street before. It might look but I like it's we exactly use. a different, a completely it different. It might room. look like this it's isn't the room. This isn't the room that the doctor who saw Sinead was in last year. No, oh, no, no, no. It's mine, Doctor <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> anyway, you get out, Leanne didn't quite take the message on board Again. because we know that she has been yeah, deaf to the to the truth of this uh, all the way through. She says, oh, he's going to be fine. We'll He'll wake pull him through up. again. He'll pull through. He Everything's going to be do OK. Again. We'll go off to Cornwall. We'll be eating hedgehog ice creams on the beach before Can't you wait. know it. That's the thing. Yep. Steve's like, hmm. No, Final scene of the episode. We are reeling at this point from the twist we're sad, that isn't... Ray was the one who was responsible for David's sinkhole. But we're also appearing. sad about Poor Ollie, aren't we? We are. We are sad. S- yes, we are sad about sad that. About it. Oh um, dear. No. Not going to Cornwall. And no. then, what else happens? No, I'm just saying there were two great scenes at the end of the episode. Yeah. First there was the Ray one and then there was this one. It's yeah. Natasha. She's back in the yeah. hospital. She's got a mask on. She's sitting outside waiting for a doctor canteen to come out and Dr. tell Doctor canteen? Doctor, doctor Scan? Doctor Scan to come and say, oh, you're so- I don't even know. I didn't even... Re- Pick up what was what was wrong with our child. It's broken his there. leg off. Broken but his we've leg. Got, we can screw it back in. Sorry, do you know Jack Webster? He's fine now. Basically, listen, Natasha. His legs come off. We'll CG it in for a few weeks, and then we'll just put a fake one on. And it'll be like it never went. Okay. The takeaway here is Natasha has a child. How old is this child? You might ask. Your child's ten, isn't it, Natasha? No, 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 no. You remember no. earlier when I said that I was uh, I broke up with my Nick child 10 is years exactly ago. nine mm. months and nine years. Is this many episodes old? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the and the doctor's like, yeah, but don't forget, during the pandemic, we only had three a week. Yeah, so do you count this episode as two episodes or one episode? Because the episode number is actually ten forty four and uh, forty three. <laughs> Yes, there's the twist at the end of this. Natasha has a kid, and from the timeline... Oh, and it couldn't have been spelled out more clearly, because the doctor says, huh, he's such a little git, isn't he? Is he like the dad? Oh, yeah, I forgot that. And Natasha goes, I'm sorry, but I just don't want to talk about the kid's father right now, because that's next week. She she was, I've had enough of that, uh, some things. I've she? had she enough is... of that dad. I've had enough talk thinking about his dad for one day. And Because I just bumped into him in the car who's park. Who's listening literally a metre away out of this whole hospital. You and can't I know they're both in the children's he's got ward, a mask on. But it's Nick. Nick has heard Natasha saying that she has got a son that ties in very nicely with it being his. I don't want to talk about that was the son that I have walked in came back to But you to know life. what? Speaking of, have you spoken to Jack Webster recently? Have you seen Adam Barlow recently? Also aborted as a child, but here he hey, is. What, what can you do? Marrying Sarah Louise. Sometimes it doesn't take. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> really insensitive. Even though the hospital records show, I don't think we saw um, Susan Barlow scan to say that she'd had an abortion. But I don't get this. Are they, are they are they retconning this? Are we missing something? Are we just you Is it just something me. boring like... 
they they had another go for right. a baby after she she had had an abortion then because she, she did get back together with Nick again after the abortion because she was that's when she was and pretending she, she was still again. pregnant did she just get pregnant then which is a little bit dull I don't think I think it's very this is the trouble right messing around with stories about women's fertility and pregnancy is very very dicey a very dicey thing to get into because you can accidentally create myths about what is possible and what isn't that can be very damaging to people who don't have a very good education in reproductive yeah, systems. Yeah, don't take your baby advice on Coronation Street. I just think it's dodgy to get into she had an abortion but it, it didn't happen or she had an abortion but then she had a baby straight away. Or, yeah, well, that's like, what I, I, I thought if you have an abortion sure. then... It really depends on how you, yeah, what kind of abortion... I don't want to get too much into it because we don't really like talking about things like this on the show because we're general not because we're sensitive but because we're generally insensitive and offend people and ignorant and very ignorant. But I just I find it a bit. It's obviously just completely soapy and you just got to go with it. So do you think that a we? It, it, is this well, Nick's no, baby? There's no doubt that this is Nick's baby. Well, really, what are you saying? Well, about she said something. Something I've had enough of this baby's father today oh, I think it's who Steve. else did she meet outside i mm. did say to you who indeed steve stupid she... sperm mcdonald i said how is she one of the only women who managed to get away with dating steve mcdonald without getting impregnated even if it was just for one night exactly she said because that was brought up wasn't it she said oh yeah we had a takeaway that one time i don't remember whether that was all that has happened but i don't know maybe if we go back and have a look at that episode was there we'll an opportunity to see getting it on but that was probably in quite a long time. I don't know. I don't know where that fits in the timeline. No, Did she no. see Steve McDonald? I should have looked this up. Did she see Steve McDonald after she had the abortion, or was it? I think it was probably before she saw Nick. So it obviously, wouldn't work then. So although I'm fairly confident it's not Steve's, there's still the the, the and then there is still of possibility, a slightly, yeah, maybe because the clues are the very precise age that she made sure to laboriously tell the person. That this child is not 10. Mm. Then she also made a point of telling this Dr. Scan that she had met the child or she had had an encounter or she was sick of thinking about this child's father as though she had previously met them. And the only two people we've seen in her meeting are Steve and Nick. And, and we also had it firmly established that she has had dates with them both. Mm. And also, you told me that there was a video that the that Coronation Street made about Natasha, where she, the actress says Natasha had an abortion. Yeah. So, explain it, that, ha- that. Yeah, so I I think probably it's just going to be that she got pregnant after, after the fact, after she had an abortion. They're going to add it in. It's going to be a you know like you know with Steve and Fiona when they said oh yeah. He got he got Fiona pregnant that time, and then she disappeared away to Australia. And now it's oh yeah, Nick got Natasha pregnant that time, and then she disappeared away to land of two salons with third on the way. And it does feel a little bit repetitive there. And I don't really want Nick to have a kid. I certainly don't want Steve to have a kid either. See, I don't need is, anybody to have is, another child in Coronation Street. But the thing at the is, moment. you don't have this. You don't have this experience of of like. It must be a bit of a paranoid worry of some men, who have had. The chance to sow their wild seeds. To think I could have a son out there or a daughter that I don't know anything about. <coughs> Boris Johnson. Well, I hope you don't have that worry in your mind. But no. But some some guys do, obviously. So this is why the storyline keeps coming up. Mm-hmm. Because I guess it's something that haunts some people. Yeah. Personally, if I could, if I could accidentally have a kid and not know anything about it, I'd be utterly thrilled. <laughs> the thought of like having to carry a child for nine months and then raise it and and be responsible for it is terrifying but if i could just accidentally have like shagged somebody 10 years ago and it turns out that they've been raising my child this whole time i'd be nothing but thrilled and and they're like you're 18 19 now brilliant fantastic you're completely financially independent from me but i can take credit for all of your achievements you can look after me and if you're if you're an awful person it was nothing to do with me because i was not there at any point in your life (laughs) can't think of anything better i suppose that they uh, this is another twist that a lot of people saw coming as soon as it was announced that Natasha Blakeman was coming back and she was going to cause uh, sort of turmoil in the next story. Everyone was like, she's going she to have next kid. They're going to go down that route. So although it was put in as a twist at the end of tonight's episode, it, it 
kind of wasn't i'd seen enough people theorizing about that I wouldn't... and and, and it, it would that certainly put the cat among the pigeons in this story because nick's been pushed to the sidelines all the way through hasn't he and and there it's was and then there's the whole fostering angle leanne's lost her kid and nick's going to gain one how well, she's going to react to that it could stage, be kind of interesting but whether or not it is actually steve or nick's kid or someone completely different at this point, moment in time nick thinks it is his kid yeah so whether or not he's going to dwell on this and not mention it to Natasha. Yeah, I don't know when Natasha's in it next. I mean, we not might not see her again yeah. for, you know, this is, months' this could time. This so, yeah, the way he thinks that he thinks about. that he's got a kid. Because he, he, met, he, he makes a point of saying to Natasha, my son, well, he's not my, he's my sort of stepson, I guess, you know. Mm. Mm. And he's also spoken about how deeply he feels for Ollie. I think if we're, if we as an audience are led to believe that this is nick's kid because that's the conclusion he jumped to and the show obviously wanted us to jump to i think it would almost be more exciting and interesting if he he acts a certain way and maybe he even tells leanne that he's got he thinks that he's got a son and then it turns out it's not god imagine being leanne and like being the only one who has a kid and then your kid like gets a terminal illness and then suddenly everyone's popping up with kids all over the place like ready-made kids mm bit upsetting it's just life's not fair upsetting. sometimes is yeah. it so that's that's quite good stuff uh very tragic for ollie i I've, it's it's gone downhill fast hasn't it i was quite surprised I, mean, I know i know they foreshadowed it greatly on wednesday but i was expecting it to be a bit later in the year that ollie was going to be on his last legs which it appears that he may well be i don't know when this kid is going to um end up dying but it feels like it's going to be a bit sooner than i thought what do you think? Were you expecting it now? I, I hadn't really thought about it. We I knew mean, it was coming. We, we knew that Ollie was going to die because... They said that there's Because no it's cure. like, there's no cure, it's degenerative and it's unlikely. Like, what, as, soon as, as soon as we knew what he had and you, anybody could look up hmm. what the prognosis is and but say... It could have been years, couldn't happen. it? I know, but the thing is, Coronation Street doesn't do, and it's sad because it's the only show that can... Um, stories that last for years. Yasmin and Jeff. It does very rarely when w one producer can start something off at the beginning of their tenure and go, this is my thing, I'm going to do this. But because of the nature of the show and how many different people are involved in it and the fact that you can't guarantee if actors are going to be around for however long you want them to be, they just can't do long-term stories that would last, say, a decade. They just can't do it. Oh, no, not that long, then. And it, w it would be possible that if it was a milder case of this, he could have lived to, mm. to, for, for years, perhaps. But um, it's not... I just I just think his sort of his card was marked, really, as soon as we... Yeah, yeah, there's going to be harrowing scenes to come. I, I'm, I'm appreciating this story still, because a lot of the other things that are happening are, like, you know, they've shown a thing a bit comedic or a bit, you know good versus evil the jeff story whereas this one it feels a lot more grounded doesn't it and i yeah, think i'm enjoying I'm it for that just the, honestly think the pure about drama much, of i it. don't like medical storylines and mm. um it's too, it's really it's just like the most devastating worst case scenario of having a kid mm. to any but um it's not quite as bad as going on holiday to Cornwall with somebody who thinks good board games are Pictionary, Scrabble and Articulate. <laughs> Steve's reaction Leanne to that was so funny. To, I, I need to take Leanne to one side and tell her about all of the innovations they've had in board games in the last 30 years. I know. <laughs> There's some you very wanna, good ones. Do you want to recommend any? No, I won't. I'm going to ask her what she likes and then... Okay. Probably a bit. Wait, wait till a few years after Ollie's died. You got died. some friends who are board game aficionados, aren't we? I'm so a you? board game aficionado. You, you, yeah, but you haven't got many. You mostly play. No, because else's. why would I buy games when they've got them all? <laughs> I'd be buying copies of games that we've already got. Before we move on, can we just say Toya's office? <laughs> what does she do sitting behind that big desk? Nobody knows. Look at pants. But yeah, she's got a she's got a mannequin she's sitting a behind her office. with with a pair of lingerie on it, just to remind her what she's where she works. Who, who knows? But I was glad to see that she's got something just you know sitting around tapping away at the keyboard. She's um, probably hacking. She probably was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that that scene with her and Imran was nice, and um, that's well, what I again, to say about you know, that, really. what could possibly how how can they continue now with mm. their 
fostering storyline when I mean it's one thing to sort of say Ollie's you know got this terrible maybe Natasha's going to be hit by a tram and they end up fostering Natasha's daughter, uh, son and then it turns out they're fostering Nick's son something, oh! something. I wonder yeah. what the kid's called yeah, did they, they didn't say did they Oliphant maybe <laughs> Substitute, Gemma. What's happening in the dev storyline this week? We are, yeah, we are pushing two hours at the moment on this middle well, set. Well, you shut up moaning talk. about how it's long. It's been a good week. I know, but 15 minutes of this episode is you telling me that okay. we've spoken for too long. You talk. Right, on Monday, Dev overhears... Cathy overhears Dev talking about selling the kebab shop on the phone. And she gets really annoyed about this and tells Mary. And they're all really shocked about it. And then... Dev comes home and walks in on Corey, I mean, Corey and Asher <laughs> on the sofa and he gets really mad, yells at him to get out. Corey's not really scared of him or intimidated because he's a little scrote, but he does leave and Dev reads the right act to Asher and um, takes her phone off of her because oh, I thought that scene was everything, the, he's the reason all of this has happened, regardless of who uploaded what and who did what and whatever, he is responsible just as much as anybody else and he should not I wouldn't let him anywhere near my kid if I was Dev. Oh, Dev's completely in the off. right. I Nina, feel so bad for Dev. I love Dev. It is really frustrating though, because you can kind of see what I mean, I can't really sympathise with Asher, but it's so frustrating to watch a, a a father trying to talk sense into this this teenage girl who obviously understands a little bit of where he's coming from but really doesn't she's infatuated with this boy oh, because he, he's he telling her pretty. how pretty she is You're and so that's pretty. what she wants to be told know, that's what really she's been worried sad. about her appearance all this time it's not just that but yeah that's a big part of it so nina comes around to talk some sense into her and says look Corey is not your future just don't just don't be seeing him and she sort of tries to make her be a bit more self-reliant on her own self-confidence but i, I mean thought... that's a bit of a losing prospect in any teenage girl <laughs> i thought that was a really really good scene and i've moaned a lot about nina recently and saying she's just kind of being used to spout vegan rubbish in the cafe and 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 annoy people and say oh that's that plastic cup that you're using there you should be using paper ones you know and, and oh, yeah, be the butt the of people's goth jokes i like bone. nina but it feels like they're just going through the preachy. same old stuff being a bit preachy with her and this scene was fantastic and that's more the nina that i want to see the friendly advice giving <sighs> nina i loved her in this scene yeah, I, I don't, I just, whenever this happens, whenever there's a scene with Nina dispensing advice or being nice in any way to Asher, when you go on Twitter, everybody is going on about them being lesbians or Nina being a lesbian. And it really frustrates me because it feels like there's it's no just room. It's Ali and Ryan all over again. There's no it? room for female friendships in the soap without speculation about people being gay. Mm. And it, I honestly don't care if she is gay or not. It just fi- I just find it frustrating that you know where where's this sort of it feels like there's something in it for nina if she fancies asha but if she doesn't fancy her and she's literally just being a nice person that feels a bit more pure to me is all i'm saying mm-hmm. and i, I think i think nina's with... a more pure person and i don't really yeah. want her to go down the route of like i fancy you so i'm going to tell you you're beautiful it yeah, means more as... for somebody to say oh, i think you're beautiful and you should love yourself if I'm not, if you're not invested in that, then being the gateway to getting their pants off. Yeah, is Nina just waiting for Asher to be sixteen so that Asher can move out as she threatened yeah. to do in today's episode? She can move out with her. Don't forget, no. Nina. If you fancy Asher, you should probably neg her a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like you are pretty, but not that pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you are pretty, but you wear glasses now. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Specky. <laughs> I am wearing glasses. We're as both I record wearing this glasses. Um, right, so Chess comes round and has a go at Dev and Asha overhears and realises what Dev is going through and how much he's doing for his kids, blah, blah. Paying the school fees and all that. Ah, <sighs> Wednesday. He also said, oh, I'm paying to keep those videos off the internet or something. I, that's I what didn't he know was... it was an ongoing process. Yeah, well, that's, this is what he's been saying. I, I don't know. That's what he said to whoever it was he was talking to, Mary or something. Um... Wednesday, it's tea time. Asha doesn't want to eat anything. Dev, Dev, Ali's like blabbering on about, oh, I have the five, five aside football team, blah, blah, blah. And we've got the sort of stereotypical par- over parenting one child and completely ignoring the other. It's what um, Sally and Kevin did to uh, Rosie and Sophie. Well, yeah. well, it, uh, interestingly, also when Rosie went to Oak Hill, Sally couldn't stop singing her praises and Sophie was feeling like. Left out. And then she yeah, became the- a lesbian. So. 
Yeah. Just think about that. <laughs> but on the, this, this, uh, on this occasion, Ardy is also at Oak Hill, but the parallels are there, just saying. Wow. We, what is Coronation Street but generations making the same mistakes over and over <laughs> again with their kids? Ardy feels like Dev doesn't care. I think he's got a good point. He drops Asha right in it and says that she's been messaging Corey on the iPad. So even though Dev took her phone away, she's still using the iPad to message him. What a cunning hacker she is. <laughs> Rookie mistake. What you need to do is take away the charging cable, Dev. Yeah, take away the, the charging cable. Yeah, and um, at, at the end, um, uh, I, I, you know, Gemma just pointed at some notes because I didn't turn them into full sentences. Dev returns and Corey's gone moving out. I don't know what happened. Oh, happens. no, that's what happened at the end of today's episode. I wrote it at the end of Wednesday's episode. Ignore that. Move on. That was the end. Right. Ash has okay. dropped in it. Right. Friday, Dev walks in on... Ca- oh, God. This was... This I, th- I didn't... Oh, maybe this was a miss. I'm not sure. It was a miss. It was a weird Kathy one. Kathy walks in and, and... No, Dev walks in and Kathy's facing the camera and she's like giving this impassioned speech about having an affair or something. She's talking like, to a to coat you, that seems very close to her and I'm thinking, are they trying to... Are they getting to the speaking to Brian? And is this a way that they're trying to do it socially distanced by dressing up a mannequin or something? And She like, was... No, go on. Having a very impassioned speech about having an affair and of revelations about relationships and how she couldn't help herself because he doesn't care and all this stuff. And I was like... It's the most interesting thing to happen on Coronation Street in years happened off screen and we're just hearing about it <laughs> in this bit. But no, it's Kathy rehearsing a scene from Brian's upcoming play, which appears to be about a robot called... <sighs> oh, I can't remember. It's something like Brad or something, or something. Yeah, it? something like that. A robot, a ro- who's an android. Yeah. And she's in love with him. And that's why that's why Kathy needs. I don't understand, but Kathy's convinced that they're destitute, even though she's doing, she's doing. Shifts for her boyfriend, who's writing perhaps the worst screenplay of all time. <laughs> I think that they should concentrate more on putting food on the table. If they're so destitute that she's having to buy reduced baked beans, maybe the dream is dead. For Brian mm. and being a writer, yeah, just to basically... get back behind that counter. Anyway, she's performing this to a mannequin with a with a trench coat on, who's supposed to be first socially distanced play reading. <laughs> um, he offers her extra shifts, and she gets very snitty, and because she's mad about this um, sale of the kebab shop, like he owes her a job. I mean, I can understand why she's mad, but he, you know, it's his business. Mm. Um, and also, if, so if they, she sells the kebab shop, the person who buys it probably needs someone to work there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, she, so she's like, no, I'm not going to help you. Why should I? I don't want money anymore. I've got my beans now. <laughs> <laughs> Ardy comes home. Corey's there stealing yoghurt. His yoghurt. Not just any yoghurt. He's stealing Ardy's yoghurt. But I thought only age. girls liked eating yoghurt. That's what I've been led to believe by no, adverts. No. Boys got to keep they have, a bit of a, they have a bit of a showdown, do uh, Ardy and Corey. Who... Ardy needs to get himself an instant pot and make his own yoghurt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they Corey's have a little, wind, like, wind in up, a little they? peeing contest. Basically. And then, and then Corey's like, why do you care anyway? What, do you love your sister? Uh, 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 yeah, you go, oh, that's a bit perverted. Oh, uh, you're it? gross. <laughs> Ar- Ardy the, you know, gives a good Ardy's guess very well. easy to wind up. Yeah. But he, he didn't back down. No, no. I thought he was... I, Because I, I, he's like, oh, I don't go. Like we're this. going up to the bedroom. Don't listen at the door. Ew. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, Ardy gets very protective. Then we have a really funny scene. I'm sure some people hated this, but I thought this... We scene, of this scene of the really, week. Scene of the week. Scene of the week. Really funny. Forget that Jeff and Tim Dev's, stuff. Dev's Forget the... the sinkhole appearing in the Blatt's garden. Dev in the kebab shop. Okay, not scene of the week, but loved it. <laughs> Dev's in the kebab shop trying to wrangle all the phones and orders because obviously Kathy's refused to help him and he's decided <laughs> it was like what's that Mr Hatch you've got you've got doner kebabs but you ordered no you've got chicken but you ordered doner kebabs that can't be true because your name is Hatch and you like chickens and then he and like he rem- I like don't he, think that we can quite recapture the comedy gold of this scene but it just worked yeah, right, and in the hands in the hands of many another actor or many another character it wouldn't be funny but this was a real, completely unnecessary, a bit like Sally on the switch, wasn't it? 
didn't really need this scene to happen, but it was really <laughs> funny. This was stupid. funnier than Sally on the Stretch. Yeah, it was yeah, stupid, yeah. but it was it was it down was to Jimmy's performance. He was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, going like, oh, what am I? You, Mr. I knew, Peck. I, yeah, I knew, I knew that you had chicken because you're Mr. Peck, you know, because uh, no, no, Mr. What, Hatch. It's a hatch. That's what chickens do. Oh, I can understand how you wouldn't be funny. And then the the other phone rings, and he's like, oh, you got the wrong one. Oh. And then you're just waiting to hear what this customer's name is. And he goes, Mr. Peck. <laughs> it was so, so stupid, but absolutely hilarious. And then <laughs> and he says, oh, you know, a peck, or like a chicken does. Or, so, oh, I didn't say that was funny. I, I, so I can't, you thought I couldn't do it. So I can't, you did it. I can't do it either. It was bloody hilarious. It's almost and like he does it as a job. It like like you said, there would be people sitting watching that. Good. That did I hate not like that Street. because I'm not watching Dev anymore. has got a lot of haters. But that was, it, it. It's like you can do it, Corey. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that you give Gemma isn't really funny. A lot of the stuff you give Brian, mm, Kirk, mm, but give Dev more some funny scenes because he can do them and he can do the serious stuff as well. He is so undervalued, Dev, on the show. He's so not by us though. He's great. He's a he's a buffoon, but maybe it's just because he's used so little when they do I don't when know. they do give him Honestly, stuff like I this. Think some the thing is though he's we can say that, but then other people can watch this scene that we've said is stupid and say oh, no, that's it's hilarious. All subjective, isn't so it? So you can't really Yeah. And then and then the the icing on top was an unintentional <laughs> uh, comedy um Sting at the end where Adi phones him up and he thinks and he's like Adi Adi who I know my son Adi okay and then he turns around and goes Corey <laughs> and he's obviously saying Corey but it sounds like he's saying the name of the program he's on I know it's like watch it back why is he, he says said Corey Cor- why is he said Corey it's like the way there's no consensus on the show as to how to say Yasmin's name oh I know Yasmin because yeah. Yasmin is what, what Tim Sally calls and her. Tim call her. But everyone else no, calls I, I her Yasmin. Sally calls her Yasmin. She calls her Yasmin so, sometimes. Uh, Tim definitely does as and well. And some, some characters have... Don't forget Tyrone. Yeah. That's what, that's what um, he called him that. Uh, Terry Duckworth called him Tyrone well, and some, a few Yeah, but some, some actors say words, say people's names differently to everybody else. And yeah. it's always a bit weird when that happens. Yeah. I'm sure there's other characters that this happens to as well. But yeah, I think there Yas- are. Yasmin's the most obvious example. Yeah, because she's such a, a prominent because figure she's at the so moment. Much at the moment yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, Dev uh, rushes home. What? No, I'm just saying, yeah, Ardia has been... Dev rushes yeah, home. Yeah. Corey's gone. Asha says, I'm leaving home as soon as I'm 16. And I don't know when that is because I haven't checked with uh, Corypedia. I was born in 2006, but actually now it says I was born in 2005. So I think I'm going to be 16 next year in January or February time. But it might be a year or so, but I'm definitely leaving and moving I'm out leaving. with Corey. Or maybe Nina, when that happens. <laughs> yeah. I would actually really, really love to see some of the younger characters move in together like the old days with like Trisha Hopkins and Gail and mm. have their own little flat. Well, they've got, um, they tried they've to got do that Emma a bit. and Maria. They tried to do that a bit when they had um, Tina. It was Tina Shack. Well, up, that it? flat that, that flat that flat Tina used to be bookies. in is where Imran, Toya and Craig lived. And, but and Ryan. Didn't, they had a bit of a, a trendy kids. Yeah. Flat, you, Cause think... you had Kate there at one point, didn't you? And oh, Ryan. Yeah. 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 Right, I, I can't remember. It's really confusing, but I ge- would like to see a genuine attempt to sort of have young people live together. I'd like to see them as a as a group of yeah. people who live together, and yeah. not just sometimes they walk in the, and out of scenes. Yeah, that that's it. They're walking going, in and out of scenes. They, I don't feel a bond between you know Craig and Toya, even though they live so together. They live what do together. they think of each other? Not got a clue. And what what does Toya? What do Toya and Imran as as professional couple? think about the fact that they live with a teenage boy basically mm. it is stupid it is oh, oh but but wouldn't it be lovely if you had like asha and nina and yeah whoever else again, wants to move again. in because i assume that summer's the same age as well um so, yeah they're supposed to be yeah. anyway sorry that's the end of it that's the end of it I, i'm still i'm still loving this it's very kind of low-key stuff isn't it? it there's nothing major happening here but the but there's still have been some great moments. Dev walking in on Corey was brilliant on Monday's episode, and Corey being such a little oh he's 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 a scrape. He's vile. He's really really 
He's the turd. Of he's Pantel. horrible. I'm I'm glad that we're not supposed to be liking him because he's, he's so he's honestly he is so smart. Nasty piece of work. Yeah. Yeah, he is. And and, and Asher can't see it. So that and he's scene was, very good at playing it. Uh, as well. He he is. Just he, he is not scared of Dev at all. He's not scared I of RJ. He just he's just he's loves like, I'm that he's my got Asher. Yeah, got a video exactly, of her exactly. Her um, so <laughs> that was good. The Nina chat was great in this story. I'm I'm loving the Alahans at the moment. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. More please. Um, you wanted to. You were a bit miffed at Kathy the other day, weren't you? When she was saying. Um, well, she had the sob story, she, wasn't Yeah, she it? hasn't got any money, but I couldn't work in the cabin. She basically said to Dev last week, like, oh, I'm destitute because I need a, I need a job and I, I can't get any... I can't work at the cabin. And then the reason that we find out that she can't work at the cabin is because she doesn't get on with Brian. She doesn't get on with Brian. Yeah, her partner. Hmm. So it's... I find it... I find this... I've heard no this sympathy, from, get, uh, Kathy. But the thing is, though, I've heard this from quite a lot of people saying... Um, you know, this pandemic, everyone's had to, who's been in lockdown, has had to spend a lot of time with their partners. And the amount of people who, who sort of will say to you with no, I don't know, they don't seem to have any self-awareness about what they're actually saying. All like, oh, it's terrible, I want to kill her or whatever. It's like, I've had the best six months of my life spending <laughs> all my time with you. It's brilliant. Oh, thanks. But how but how do you end up living with someone that you don't actually like and understand? <laughs> I also wanted to have a bit of a complaint, or maybe it's not Go right. I, what, what's going on at like. the chip shop? Because Dev still does own the chip shop, doesn't he? No, and we, we seem to have forgotten about that. Why not sell the chip shop? Is the chip shop doing better business than the Prima Donna? Because likes... we never see anyone buying any chips in there, but we I see lots of what? kebabs being bought. You don't see in there, Michael. The Anybody reason you don't working. see it is because there's no drama. No drama and in the chip shop. he's probably thinking to himself, Can't top of my two businesses, uh, which Stella one Yana causes me the most <laughs> amount of problems? The chip, the, the kebab shop, so I'll sell that. Okay. Chip okay. shop is very low maintenance. Once I got rid of Yana, yeah. it's plain sailing. I was going to say, you can't beat the drama of Scylla and Yana trying to deep fry chicken, uh, sorry, a turkey on Christmas Day. Think just can't top it. Um, yeah, I would say maybe consider selling that, Deb, or offering Kathy some shifts in the chip shop. Does Chesney still manage the chip shop? I it's don't a shame. Know. It's a crying shame. You can't sell it to, to Ray, really. Right. Yeah, he's like, I'm not interested in that end of the street. You're um, all right, What's Mary's dolphin story? Oh, I yeah, right, what's Mary's. Happening. She talks about. Didn't she have it? She had a conversation with a dolphin when she went out on a boat one time. <laughs> I can't remember. That was kind of funny, but I don't remember much about it. So I shall move on. Move on. We've got tiny little stories. Basically, yet again, Daniel is leaving answer phone messages for Nikki. Yet again, Adam's warning him off of her, saying, she's a prostitute, Daniel. She's not your friend. <laughs> um, and then Nikki comes round and says, you've left me 25 messages. And Daniel says, actually, it's 26. She wants to stop oh, all God, this. You're a nerd. He says, well, um, I'm not... Let's take, be friends. Yes, just, yeah, let's just be friends. And then maybe I wouldn't have to pay you for it. How do you fancy that? And she's like, yes, that's a good idea. You sucker. She's, they agree to go for a drink together. So... Um, yeah, he he's in there. He seems to get exactly the same service, but without having to pay hundred and fifty pounds. I'm not a pop. into what a Nikki. businessman he is. I'm not into Nikki at all. Um, well, I think that's the, we were supposed to like her after this, but I'm still it's still sticking in my crawl that she took that money from Adam without much question last week when he tried to get rid of her. But we didn't get to see enough of the story. There was literally three scenes in the whole week of this story. Maybe there's going to be more, and maybe we'll change our mind. Maybe it doesn't... we'll hunker down and doesn't really the follow the, the 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 direction i thought this was going in last week when she was sort of when we found out that she had a daughter mm. and then she was desperately taking money and you sort of imagined that she only worked because that was the way the only way she knew how to fend for her and a daughter and single mum you know has to be a prostitute to earn a crust just like lame is um oh yeah and so when she then says, yeah, I'll find I'll be your friend and hang out with you. You have to wonder where the kid is. <laughs> that maybe she so maybe, desperately needs maybe money she for. will open up to Daniel about the child next week or something and then we'll all feel sympathy for her. I don't Just know. Just bring the kid round. I, got, I, got, I would say to Daniel, look, if you're my friend and you want me to stop charging you, you've got to do something for me. So you babysit my kid while I go out on the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also had uh, a bit of Todd Squad today, which is... Fairly unnecessary. I don't think we needed this story injected into Friday's a drama. A lot happened this week, didn't it? A Gemma. Lot. Oh, wow. Guess what, everybody? 
the security guard is only the uh, the the security guard they found in the canal yes. on Coronation Street. What's the Johnny and Scott security guard? The, the security guard they found in the canal is the only person you've seen in Coronation Street who is a character who has been a security guard in the last five years. And that is Cal. <laughs> this is not the Johnny and Scott security guard everywhere. That was a red herring. That was a bizarre red herring. Like I said last time, how is it going to be a 30-year-old corpse wearing a security guard's well, you were right. So anyway, it's Cal, he reckons. Yeah, he's, yeah he because, doesn't know for because sure. Because Billy, Billy, is, Billy is operating on total... Coronation Street soap logic, which is that, which is to say, that I know somebody who's a security guard. It must be him who's dead because there's nobody else who's got a speaking part in Weatherfield who wears a security like, guard's yeah, he's uniform. Yeah, got a security guard's uniform. What else do you I want? I don't know anyone else who wears one. It's like the uh, the Monty Python Holy Grail scene when they go and burn in the witch. How do you know she's a witch? Because she looks like one. How do you know it's Kel? Because he's wearing a uniform. <laughs> also, the description matches, apparently. So, yeah, as far as Billy's yeah, concerned, Yeah, because middle-aged Kel. security guards yeah, are very, very You don't, you don't get many diverse, of them for, for a dozen, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so they're just worried about how Paul will feel if he finds out about it, aren't they? I think Paul's going to be thrilled. I don't think he will. Really? Billy says, I don't know how to tell him. Um, and then he acts weird when Paul comes back, so he thinks it's about Todd... But Billy doesn't say because he thinks he's going to get upset. But I'm, I think honestly, Paul happens to bring up, Paul, doesn't he? Like, oh, my past was so tragic. Oh, I, I hope nobody mentions Cal again. I hope nobody brings up Cal um, so because I don't like, want to crack open a case of champagne when I find out he's been dragged out of a canal as a corpse. And then, what was it that you wanted to say to me, Billy? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Look, I thought you would play to Monster Munch to distract you. <laughs> oh, baby! Oh, my favourite. It's my oh, second birthday. You've got those mini party eggs. <laughs> no, Paul, it's not your birthday anymore. I have a scotch egg like a grown-up. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I guess that's going to be coming into the show next week, so we'll leave our speculation to that. Um, what I'll do you think go. about Cal and the Canal? Interesting So twist. you reckon it definitely is Cal now. Oh, probably. I, I don't understand how they would have two red herrings for the security guard. Because uh, really, at the end of the day, the twist could only be from this. It's actually nobody that we know. So therefore, the whole thing is completely unsatisfying. The question is, how did Cal get in the canal? Did he Paul throw... pushed him in. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. I did As a birthday was... present to himself. <laughs> I think... Happy birthday, TV. <laughs> There you go. Uh, I guess the two options are he threw himself into the canal when he realised what a horrible monster he was. And the what second have one I is somebody else realised what a horrible monster he was and pushed him well, into the canal. Well, didn't Bernie have a big effort to try to out him as a pedo? Oh well, yeah, that's why um, Chesney and Gemma's house was set on fire, wasn't it? Because they thought they were attacking Kel, so it would make sense would if make somebody sense. actually got to him. If somebody decided to become a um, avenger of justice, what they called vigilante over the, the yeah. pandemic break. Yeah. I mean, some people took Castlefield up... Castlefield Vigilante. Some people took up, like, baking and knitting. Yeah. Pushing pedos pushing. into canals <laughs> is another thing, I yeah. guess. And then but... when you're back to work after lockdown, oh, what did you do during what did you your lockdown? Do? Well, <laughs> <a> sourdough. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Finally, this is a very long street talk, but, you know, we did have an extra <laughs> half an hour to talk about this week. We yeah, try you and wait keep till it next week. Try and keep it over two hours next week, but the Why? time has come. Didn't you have fun talking? I did. I thought it was a, a very enjoyable today. Um, we've got to score it, and we've got to get Ooh, our character of the week. Isn't it? <laughs> As so I said many, at the very beginning funny. of this, this was not a five. This wasn't a five. Uh, the, the the Daniel and Nikki story a bit, mm, there were things with the password that was a bit mm, Shona like you said I'm still like oh, that's real um, the Friday Tim and Yasmin stuff and, and Jeff and all that is like oh they should have done and made a bit more of that on Friday the sinkhole I was led to believe it was going to be a bit more exciting than it was but maybe that's just you my own fault completely my things. own fault that's not I'm the thing is also there's always like a bit of a golden rebound effect there is when you've watched diet episodes one after the other for weeks on end starting to wonder why you even watch this program then when it gets really good i think you award it bonus points but because it's not no there were anymore. some superb scenes this week it was really good i mean tim what was i worried tim, about tim having a go at jeff in the kitchen sally trying to sneak the book out <laughs> with jeff uh the police coming to get jeff in the end load of great stuff there um, the the stuff with the hole was quite exciting, so that gets it at least half a point just a for putting a giant hole, hole in, in in David's garden. What was the name of that horror movie where they had bugs like tremors? Yeah, 
Um, the the Ollie Maybe Wobbles stuff, kind of exciting. That's moving on. Tragic stuff. Great acting. Character from the past has reappeared. Dev, brilliant <laughs> stuff. The, the, Michael, the Mr. Peck, you Mr. Could have just done it this, there this was, at the beginning if you were going to This recap. is how most podcasts manage to stay underneath yeah. half an hour, isn't it? Just, just like briefly describe. Bullet point. Yeah. So there was a lot of good. Um, I am feeling, oh, it's hard. It's it's really hard because I'm going between a four and a four and a half. Really? Yeah. I was going between a three and a half and a four. I think it's four for me. I'm going to give it four faces like an underdone panini, which is what happens when you <laughs> fall asleep on Audrey's corduroy sofa. <laughs> oh, I feel like you're right. It is a bit of a rebound effect. If I gave it a four and a half, was it really a four and a half? No. Or am I just being mean if I don't mean? say it was? Do what you want. Nobody's I'm going to go for a four and I've got a feeling that our Facebook group is going to be scoring higher than this. I think the this. Facebook group will score it. There was an half. awful lot it's of great, five. but there was some, oh yeah, we'll get some fives with yeah. no doubt for this week. But I, I feel justified in being able to point out some bits that didn't work as well as they could have done. <laughs> um, I, thought I think this you'll week. find so that the I... soil type of Weatherfield has actually been established as very rocky and unlikely to develop the criteria needed to make a sinkhole due to a sewer malfunction. I don't know what to rate it. I've got a few options here, so I just want to read out a few of my favourite ones. Oh, well, there are so many good ones down. I wanted to read I out. I could give it four wet weekends that Alia calls a boyfriend. I, <laughs> I could give it four extramarital relationships with the robot i could give it four officers from the yogurt police that's my favorite one so maybe i'll go for that one officers from the yogurt and police. character of the week i oh, know this is the toughie uh, people are gonna say tim aren't they people because are gonna say tim and tim's I'm, managed to stop being a dick i'm kind of i'm kind of going there no i you love, don't get rewarded for doing what you should have been doing i love dev this two week. months ago I I I, like I I really enjoyed watching Leanne this week, although we didn't see a whole lot of her. I like Kath, Kathy's cyborg boyfriend. You can't give it to him. <laughs> I I enjoyed David as always. Jeff was fantastic to watch. Um, Sally for being brave and going in there to get a laptop, although we did give it to Sally last week. I'm gonna go Tim. I'm sorry. I I I really enjoyed get Tim. Um, he's out he's back. House. I'm sure I'm not going to stay loving him. I don't think there's going to be many other opportunities for me to give Tim character of the week. No, probably not. This is, I this want is his finest to love moment for Tim. years. I really want to love Tim. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say it is Tim this week for me. Well, I'm glad that Tim fans finally got to see Tim being heroic. And he was. It was really good. Um, really good scenes. If you if you like Tim as a character, you would be vindicated for being a fan of him because... He um, stood up to his dad and told him what for. Yeah, and the, and the way Joe played it was, was spot on, I thought, as well. That bit where he pointed at Jeff and was like, I've never done that to my wife. I've never shoved a camera in her face. <laughs> I yeah. also loved Jeff's, Je like, um, Ian Bartholomew's performance as Jeff this week when he realised that his laptop was yeah. missing. Oh, so many bits fantastic. where he'd been unmasked. He's really fantastic at playing that and recovering as well. He's just so, so many nuances, so, so good at, at acting for Jeff so like is, is Jeff your character of the I, week no he can't be because he's evil <laughs> you can say Pat Phelan Gemma is our number two I know, ranked I character know. of the week I know. joined with Sally at the moment we, we've I, I found out so uh, if you give if you give Sally? it to Sally this week then no. Sally's going to pick Phelan it's going to happen no. one of these days no Sally's not going to get a no um, I actually think I'm going to give it to Jeff. I thought you might. <laughs> I thought you might. Did you? Justify your choice. Oh, because it I was funny. It. it was funny. It was effortlessly, to me, it was effortlessly funny and stupid, but he pulled it off. I think he pulled it off. I can't keep apologising for liking something on the assumption See, that other people won't. This is me and but, Reg Holdsworth right here. <laughs> but it was corny and silly and and ridiculous, but he also managed in the same scene to like go on the phone to find out that his daughter has been having it off with the evil kid that's causing him all his money problems. Yeah, all the scenes where he had to argue with Asher, where he where he yeah. told Corey to sling his hook, was, was brilliant. He he got everything spot on this and week. It, and also, he's just really good. He's One thing that I think that people don't really notice that Jimmy Harkison's good at is is playing a very wary, tired... We're, we're, weary or wary? Weary. Right. 
Like, he's drained. Like, he, when he was yeah. trying to do his sums, and he's just like, oh, you guys should really be self-sufficient by now. And I'm here trying to juggle these businesses and people and just constantly being disappointed and, <clears throat> like, trying to plead with Cathy and getting nowhere. And he's really got no allies or he hasn't got a wife or a girlfriend to back him up. He, hasn't, he can't share his burdens with anybody. Mm. Oh, I just feel really bad for him. I it feel must be awful. So bad for being Noah a single the parent of kids of any age. Yeah. I can't imagine how difficult that would be. But it's interesting that they're exploring it a little bit with Dev. I'd like to see a bit more. Mm. Mm. It's kind of difficult to um, sympathise with someone who's having a hard time because they've got three businesses and their children are going to <laughs> to private school. You know, <laughs> that's a bit um, out of touch, but. You know, the general sentiment of being, well, you, you know, know Dev, the first, when, when I first when I think about Dev, the first thing I think of is snob. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> was that from this week when Big Willie so, said that? yeah. Like, no, maybe No, not. I don't think so. <laughs> buffoon, maybe. Yeah, lovable buffoon. Buffoon.